Alright. Okay, so, GM view. Um, for posterity. For posterity. Um, okay, so, Jason takes the point of the inspiration. Is anyone interested in, interested in answering the faxpiration question? What would you like to do when you retire? Uh, if you are interested, go ahead and roll a d20. In addition to the normal bennies of getting a faxpiration die, you also get to ask the question of any NPC that you've met previously during your adventures. Ah, oh, Wayne, coming in uh, with a, a with super a very, strong with with a, two. Relaxing two, or relaxing two. Going once, going twice. <laughs> oh, wow. What a hero. Okay, uh, going once, going twice, and a victory with a two. Every plus one matters. All right. Uh, take it away, Wayne. What would Wayne Larson do when he retires? I, f I feel like Wayne, I mean, he's in his mid-20s at this point, but he feels like he's going to do so much with his life, or at least he thought he was going to do so much with his life. <laughs> Um, before all this happened, uh, he probably he had thoughts of like, yeah, when I really get you know, well established and you know have a career, I can you know, afterwards I could you know retire someplace quietly and teach and patch all my wisdom in terms of acting and other things that I've learned. Mm -hmm. And now he just wants to survive to retirement. Oh, yeah, I guess retirement would feel like the furthest thing from anybody's mind. I don't know. Um, Alright, you may ask the same question of any NPC you've met previously in your adventures. I say adventures because I feel like you've had a couple of adventures now. There's been a Re couple of things. Yeah. Retirement? Yeah. There's um, no retirement in Barovia, just death. Yeah, but some people fantasize about stuff, you know? You know what? I, I think because they have maybe reached that point where they could possibly contemplate it i'd like to know what um Kolyan would like Col to do in retirement Kolyan and durovich oh man Kolyan and durovich would like to well he knows in his heart that the people will give eastmark a very hard time so he wants to live long enough to see eastmark become the man he knows he can be right um, so that Eastmark can take over the duties of Burgomaster and he can tend to his garden and go, you know, well, you know, the church got burned down, but go, go to the church once it gets rebuilt, um, help out in the community and, you know, maybe, maybe there'll be some grandbabies. I don't know. He could, you know, could maybe watch, watch the grandbabies, play with the grandbabies. Kind of nice. He would like to see Irenia uh happy uh he's not he's not really sure what to do with her so he'd uh he'd very much like to he'd like to live long enough to see eastmark step into the role that he was he was born to play that he might finally set down his burden for a little while uh so yeah that's that's kind of where he's at gardening and uh gardening church and grandkids that's kind of what he's uh what he's after so, yeah. that's uh, I, d I didn't foresee that because he like carries such a heavy burden. Yeah, but that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, we'll see what happens. I will go ahead and turn this music down, and we'll go ahead and get back into um to uh, the town of Valakai. All right. So, what now? It is 10.40 at night. Sleep, I think. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Because the next day is going to be busy, because uh, Wayne plans to go back to uh, Blinsky's toy shop, and mm -hmm. hopefully Blinsky's still alive yeah. um and just in preparation for the fact that we've got a lot on our plate wayne would like to so 
theatrically, uh, thematically, whatever you want to call it, Wayne's going to go through Chris's things just to sort of take stock and see what might be useful. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, I would like to use one of my real world points to find another ba box of ammunition, if that's okay. possible. Yeah, if you still have uh, the um, real world tokens, definitely cash them in. I have three left, so I would like right. to cash in one. All right, this is for p pistol ammunition or? For pistol ammunition, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. This. All right, let's see. That would be typically 50 per box for pistols. Correct. All right. Sounds good. I do know Anne wanted to get her leg fixed mm -hmm. and maybe something for her arm. Um, so I was as was planning on taking Anne also to Jablinski's okay. to help her do that. So Blinsky's so in the morning. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, unless you guys had some stuff you wanted to do at the tavern, um, I will just fast forward things to morning and everybody will gain the benefits of, uh, a long rest. Um, I think this would be your second night, right? Or is this your first night? Do we... This will be our first night. This, this, is, your, first this night. is your first night. This is your first night. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So we did the milestone early. Okay. Got it. Um, Okay. We did do the milestone, right? Of that's how you guys get to level three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. prepped us at the end of last session. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So you complete your first rest in Valakai. Um, you wake up refreshed and empowered by the memories of uh, what you have done and what you were fighting for and what you're trying to get back to. And uh, let's see, everyone would gain well rested unless they had too much exhaustion to to do so. And then um, everybody would clear the normal stuff that you clear for successfully taking a long rest in the sanctuary. Uh, which would be, you know, covered right down here with these bones under recovery rules. Uh, your wounds, your injuries, uh, saving throws if you need to make them. All that good stuff. Alright. And... In the morning, is everyone headed to Blinsky's uh, first thing in the AM? Possibly not. Okay. I um, guess I would try. Wayne to will go, and I guess together. Anne and Ez, unless okay. anybody else wants to tag along. All right. Uh, let's see. I mean, Robin would go along. She hasn't actually been yet, so unless unless somebody else has something they want to try to get her to go do. Well, this morning, Eastmark is going to ask if anyone would help him, and he knows this is asking a lot after everything that, that you guys have done, but he wants to know if anyone would be willing to help him look into the washerwoman. Robin will help. Uh, because he doesn't want to leave town without at least going through the motions, essentially, of um, trying, to, trying to be helpful to uh, the burgomaster. And he, uh, he apparently, um, you know, he, he thinks that he can go there, just take a look. If there is anything worthwhile, then, you know, that's just another bargaining chip, essentially. So, all right. So... Yeah. If... Something we plan on doing anyway, so... Okay. So, real quick, would I need to roll a con save to see if I finally clear that concussion, or does that just happen with the long rest? Because that's the last injury I have. I believe if you don't have any other wounds, uh, not at this point. You've got the blood of heroes, so concussion right. would be tissue damage. All right. If only it was that easy to heal from stuff IRL. <laughs> oh man. Oh wow, Irene, yeah. Oh, you a fucking mess, girl. All right. Uh, let's see. Got to make a Constitution save, I guess. There we go. Uh, that ain't gonna do it. Alright, so she gets sort of one wound. Uh, so she still got three wounds and, uh, disrupted equilibrium. Ugh. Jeez. Alright. So no wonder she was feeling so weird around Is it? <laughs> oh, that's definitely why, for sure. Alright. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll grab the people that are going over to, uh... To visit Blinsky real quick, and we'll get that taken care of. Uh, Irene does not want to go with you to Blinsky's. Okay. 
Understandable. Taking its sweet time to load. Mm -hmm. All right. So as you arrive at Blinsky's, all right. Put you guys inside. There we go. Get a camera bat in here. Okay, and drop you guys onto the scene. All right. Um, so, Blinsky is just like turning the the sign door to say open when you guys arrive, and he looks uh, he looks cheery, um, but a bit a bit uh, a bit sleepy, and he says, uh, "Oh, I know you." You were here the other day! You have leg, and you were friends with Doll Girl! And you! I helped you with leg! Yes, Blinsky, I was hoping you'd be able to help my f new friend with her leg. Of course! Um, I helped it. I helped them. Uh, you're also missing a hand! Oh yeah, that's right. You're not here, Dom. My bad. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, I was like, "Fuck, Dom." Jeez. All right. Uh, so he's really playing that Stoke shit up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and stares at them and says, "Yeah." And then uh, Blinsky <laughs> says, uh, "Do you want to be like a pirate? You can have special hook for hand. That would be easy fix. It's like in story I've been reading to Piccolo." There's pirates, there's uh, mermaids, there's island that is trapped all alone. And people, they get tricked into coming to the island by a little boy who is not a little boy at all. And he just is very bored and lonely, so he keeps bringing people to his island and making them go on adventures. Could you imagine such a thing? Who comes up with this stuff? Are you talking about Peter Pan? You have heard of this story? Yes. I picked Although... it up from the spine mine and it is a real page turner. I think that Peter Pan is kind of a bad boy though. He's stealing children. Well, I mean, if I'm remembering the story, it's been years, but I mean, he's a child himself. No way. He's some kind of fake creature. Well, well, I guess it depends on... You know what? I'm gonna shut up. Lots of fake creatures pretend to be things that they are not to get their way. You should be very careful going out in the forest if you have that kind of attitude. It is good to be helpful, but sometimes when you think you see a little boy or a little girl, it is not what you think at all. I'll remember that. So, um, Miss A's and Miss Anne, I will need to get measurements. Uh, I cannot make something this fancy in very short time. It will take many days to craft it. And some money. I was hoping, uh... Due to our prior relations, you could maybe get her something on loan? I do not just keep body parts around. I can check in the back. Wait, you have body parts in the back? Piccolo stares at you. As you get closer to the counter, it shrieks at you. Ah, yeah! I just and wanted to see in the back if he's got... Body? That's... Uh, Pic Piccolo, point Piccolo points to the sign that says employees only. It doesn't mean real body parts, Wayne. I don't know, it's the guy's plenty creepy. God, seriously? 
killer very, vibes. I just very have very normal very size body parts. She is so big, I don't think this will help. I will have to modify. And he comes out with like, just a, what looks like a doll's leg, but for like a human sized doll. How long do you think it would take you, Blinsky? Yeah, I could make this bigger in two days. I need to get measurements for socket and straps. I need to extend some things. I add some extra length to it and uh, reinforce for her weight. Do you also want a hook? I could make you one. Uh, Anne says, uh... Will the hook help me swing my hammer harder? And he's like, hey, probably. You could also use it to, like, hook stuff. And she says, uh, okay, do that too. And then he says, uh, oh, okay. It will be, uh, let me get my calculations. And he puts his readers on and he pulls the book out from under the, the counter. Okay. Alright. He says, um, for the hook hand and adjustments to this leg is going to be 25 gold pieces. It's a lot of expensive equipment to make sure it's comfortable and you can put it on quickly. Is it okay? And would you... Mind if we get you the money in a couple of weeks? A couple of weeks? <laughs> I have Look, business to run. Blinsky, last time I was here, I gave you everything I had left. It was appreciated. I used it to buy all sorts of parts and supplies. That you used to and make... And to pay my taxes. That would make boys and girls happy, yes? Well, yes. Bringing well, joy you... to little girls and little boys, that is my greatest passion. If, if you could help her out and give us a couple weeks, then you could bring more joy to these boys and girls. Hmm. He looks uh, like he's considering. He says, um, I could put you on line of credit, I guess, but... You have to promise me that if you find a way to bring toys to life, you will tell me right away so that I can make all of my toys come to life. Then they can try for wherever they need to go to bring joy to little girls and little boys. What if we had collateral and to secure that line of credit? Oh, you sound like uh, you sound like that guy who gave me Piccolo. That uh, Mr. Richard. He had mm. he had me do some work for him uh, on his wagon. It it's a very. A very nice wagon. That man Richard has so much money. I wondered why he needed to give Monkey his collateral. But then when he saw how much Monkey loved me, uh, I got to keep it. Hmm. Who, who gave you the monkey? You can leave Poppy with me. It's collateral. Absolutely not. Oh. I was thinking more in terms of this and Wayne will unsling uh, Chris's rifle from his back across and... across town. You hear Leo say, "Son of a bitch." <laughs> um, he'll open up the bolt. He'll remove the rounds, and he will set the rifle on the countertop. Oh, I can hold this and study it as much as I want. That would be all Wayne. right. Can I, can I place you, of making a promise. Can I of... talk to you, Wayne? I am going to update my calendar right now. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get, give me one second. Let me confer with my business associate. And Wayne will pick the rifle back up off the counter 
Piccolo, and this is going to be incredible. We will be like crazy artificers. Yes. What? That is too much collateral. Do you know what you're giving him? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, see, does does Ez know what what uh, he's giving her? Uh, I mean, I have proficiency. I think I could recognize what it is. Okay. All right. Well, then we up the line of credit to be commiser compensatory. It's, it's yours to give away, but there's a lot of uses for something like that. Well, there is. There's, as you saw, one of our party has one of his own, and I'm better with these. And he packs the pistols at his hip. As as Just... as Anne continues to grow. Um, the leg that she has is less and less viable. Like, she will eventually not have a means to get around. She, she will be reduced to, like, one leg status. So, I why mean... Don't, why don't you just promise to bring him this magic? There's already gunpowder and firearms in this world. No, magic is limited. Happen. I don't know how that's going to change things. He is well-meaning. What do you think he could do with that magic? Make people like, he, like he said, someone that's, you know, you know, someone that appears to be a harmless boy or girl could be a fake creature. I'm, I don't know what someone like that would do with the ability to bring toys to life. You've seen the toys he makes. That scares me. These toys are nice. We'll agree to disagree. It's well crafted, but scary as shit. All, all I know is that since I I joined you guys, we're a little down bad, as some would say, for weapons. Until we get to my cart, I don't know if we should be handing out what we got. But it is yours. I probably shouldn't have said anything. No, you had a right to ask a question. It's just... I'm not giving up Dunbar. Dunbar is not collateral. Not to mention that if, if I can get him to make more bullets, get him to make silver bullets, that could go a long way as well. Oh, it definitely will. Do as you will. All right, Blinsky. Here's what I'm proposing. Okay. I leave you the rifle as collateral. Mm -hmm. This will go towards getting Anne kitted up with a hook and a leg. Mm -hmm. And this will also go towards you making... Silver bullets for me. Well, they, silver bullets are expensive, but... Um... Ah, but I'm leaving you something like this. A rifle. That and doesn't I've change the fact you... that I don't want to have a lot of silver lying around. Well... If, if you bring me the silver, then perhaps... Then I think we can meet in the middle on that. A lot of you people can... think that there's plenty of silver because we use for money. But look, and he takes out some silver uh, coins from his like little, you know, cash box, and he scrapes at it with his fingernail. And it is only now that you're realizing that so much of these coins, uh, most of these coins, are actually just iron. Uh, that ha that have a bit of polish on it. He says the silver all dried up a long time ago. The werewolves went and killed all the silver miners. Shit! All right. Well, all those mines are just full of monsters now, or collapsed in. That is why it is so important when you have actual real silver to always check and keep it safe there are some people that wish we had not made the lecture on pieces because then we could get the silver out but 
It's all mixed in with the gold that makes it bad. Wayne just nods and says, Thank you for letting me know how. You know where you could works. find some silver, though? The ruins of Argen Vostholt. The ruins of Argen Vostholt. Mm hmm. It is, where are those ruins? It is only a day or so south uh, west of town. That's an old mansion where an order of paladins used to be. They had lots of treasure and armor and weapons. They were specialized in fighting undead and all sorts of bad guys. So they had silver weapons. Also, the symbol of their order was a silver dragon. What happened to him? Oh. The... Turns out their leader was actually a real silver dragon. And he led him on a big war against Strahd. But they lost the war real bad. And uh, the dragon was killed and chopped up into lots of tiny pieces. And then all of the knights were killed, but they were so upset about losing that they turned into uh, undead and ghosts and stuff. They still ride around on their horses trying to fight evil. Do they fight just anyone or just specifically evil? Sometimes they people? think that good guys are bad guys. They are very crazy from their grief. Wayne's thinking back to that moment where we all hustled off the road and saw that undead knight ride by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wayne will just nod and say, thank you for uh, for that piece of information. Um, I, can that? Have, I can have Anne's leg and hand ready in two days. Come back on the 24th. In the morning should be fine. Okay. And where uh, would I find the uh, the bookstore that you got this lovely oh, story from? Also, I don't want to put pressure on you, but let's say two weeks and you come back with money or I keep the rifle. Two weeks. So that would be the Fifth of Sityar. I will add to calendar. Now, exactly how much money are we talking about? Uh, it was 25 gold pieces. Okay. For this costume work. Alright. Alright, I will add you guys to this calendar event. Alright. So, Blinsky, um... Mm -hmm. Where would I find that bookstore? Uh, and he gives, yeah, he gives you directions to it. Okay. And have you figured out how you'd be able to make more bullets? Could I have that live round back, or did you have to take it apart? I'm, I'm still working on it. I got distracted with another project. Oh, uh, I don't want you getting distracted with Anne's thing. Nope. Nope. Don't worry. This is going to take top priority. I would not want right. this big lady to be mad at me. No, that that wouldn't do. Uh, any chance you might be able to give me uh, three weeks instead of two you may attempt on that collateral? You may attempt a persuasion check. All right. Mm. And I'll throw on my... Um, uh, Faxpiration for good measure. Okay, so this is without adva uh, advantage, but you are going to throw your Faxpiration on there? Sure, why not? Okay. Alright, roll the d6 for me. Uh, he says, I, uh, I don't know. There are lots of people who are outsiders that just never come back. Uh, but I'm talking about an extra week, not a month, my friend. Hmm. 
Okay. But. Hmm. Uh, and you see, you see in your mind's eye, uh, like two negative, uh, red, red negative symbols appear above his head. As uh, he accepts the delay, but you lose Blinsky faction for doing so. Mm. Duly noted. So you you succeeded, but also failed because your roll was was bad. But he also figures you guys are gonna die anyways, and I'll get to keep the rifle. So. Well, if Wayne dies anyway, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying that's, uh, that's kind of uh, his angle. Is like, oh yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. What's another week when you guys are probably gonna die anyways? So, uh, but he didn't say that because he's a gentleman and a, and a scholar. All right. I will update the uh, calendar events accordingly. All right. Thank you. All right. So your business here is complete. Yes, no? Um, Blinsky, question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you regularly make toys for uh, um, for the girls and boys over at the orphanage, or is it just upon request? Well, when they first started the orphanage, I was making toys left and right like hot cakes for them. But the mistress that runs the place, she says they're too spooky. Mm. So, the last time I tried to bring them toys, she took them, but I got the feeling she was going to do something to them. Which is very sad, because they have so much tragedy and heartache over there with the little boy dying. And then three of the children ran away afterwards. Yes, we, we heard about it last night over, over dinner with uh, the Baron. And uh, just was curious, because you said you had made toys for them in the past. Didn't know if it was a standing order. Eh, not anymore. And he looks around wistfully at all the toys that he loves so much. And you could tell that there's a part of him that doesn't understand. Like, why, why they aren't flying off the shelves. Is it, have you ever thought about maybe making something more to what the um, headmistress f feels is better for the children, just to humor her? Hmm. She is a very scary lady. I don't know if I would want to sit down with her for a long time by myself. Oh, I didn't realize she was a scary lady. Oh, she's very mean and very loud lady. I would be very scared if I was orphan in that place. And she's mean to... to everyone? Uh, I never seen her be nice. But luckily yeah, those kids have Milovoj and uh, Theodora. So it's not just them with that mean old lady. Hmm. No, well, Blunsky, if you ever want someone to, uh, you know, look after you, I mean, we, we might be able to accommodate you. I mean, Anne can do wonders with mean old ladies. Oh, I don't need anything bad to happen to her. No, 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 I just mean, like, protect you, look over you. Oh, it's fine. I stay here at my shop. Also, I, I am friends with Strahd von Zarvich, so I don't worry about anything. Really? Mm-hmm. You've been to his castle? No, but he came here to buy stuff once. Oh, that's right, you said. Does that make you a friend? Yes, he said my work was impeccable. He said that I was incredibly talented. And you see him, like, start to almost inflate with pride. He, as, uh, as gets a really, uh, like, bitter look on her face, now she feels sick. It's okay to be jealous. 
Maybe you will find something that you're good at too, and Strahd von Zarovich will tell you how great you are. Oh, he'll see it. He sometimes, uh, he says he sometimes comes to town uh, way, uh, with magic so that he can check in on things. And that while he was there, he my shop caught his eyes. Hmm. What sort of things does he check in on? I don't know. He is the ruler of the whole lion. I guess he just checks in on stuff to see how he's going. Well, no one ever the... believes my story, though. They say that he's never leave castle in 40 years. What did he look like when he came here? Um... Uh, and he jingle and he jangles over to um, the, the shelf and he grabs the strawed Muppet. Oh god. <laughs> and he says, he looks just like this! And he makes it talk, and as he makes it makes the Muppet talk, he says, uh, Your goods are very impressive. You have a craftsman touch for sure. Possibly some of the best work I have seen, since the great artificer who worked on Castle Raven loved. How, how long ago was it that he came? Oh, like a, a year ago, I think. I see. How long ago did the Baron shut down the town? Uh, three months ago. Did he say anything about the town when he's here? Who? The the Baron? He never oh. comes in here. No, Strad. No, that's not true. He came in here to ask me about building some effigy for his new uh, festival. But I can't say anything about it. It is top secret. But I'm it's sure going it's gonna be to some of your be best pretty work. good. It's going to be pretty good. Well, I mean, I don't know about you two, but I can keep a secret. And Wayne will kind of look over at Anne and Ez and say, You seem pretty proud of yourself. I mean, we've seen your work. Come on. You don't want to share just a little bit? Um, well, it has to do with this son. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right, all right. I have to focus. I'm going to get to work, okay? You guys have okay. a good day. All right. You guys roll out. All right. While they were off doing this, do peeps back at the, the place, do you wait to go to the washers or do you head over to the washer place right away? What's your strat? I mean, is there anybody hanging around the inn that oh, we late, should late be? Oh, late tavern? Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. All right, well, obviously at breakfast, Danica is going to proposition you as to whether or not you are able to go and investigate what's going on with the wine shortage. Like, she, she's... She, she kind of approaches you guys. Uh, let's see. These people will be out and about. Okay. Alright. Uh, you were able to speak with your... your husband about it? Uh, yes. I spoke with him last night, and... Um, he agrees that it could be much more serious than just a family feud. You seem very capable and very... Um, very powerful. Uh, if you could make the journey to find out what is going on, we could compensate you generously. Uh, well, two questions. How, how far away is the vineyard and what kind of compensation are we talking about? It would be a, a day and a half's travels. And if you go and find out what happens and returns, we can give you 50 gold coins.
Um, you just need to go, find out what is going on, tell them that the people of Valokai and the valley are suffering, and that whatever feud is happening, they need to stop. But if it's worse than that, if it's something very bad, then I I need to know. We need to know. Yeah, Robin will, will not... And if it. something dangerous is happening, and you do something about it, my father-in-law is a very wealthy man. He will, he will repay your kindness, and your heroism if it is required. And your father-in-law, his name? Uh, she looks at you, and she says... Oh. His name is Davian Markov. He is the oldest member and the head of household for the Markov family. This is an old family that has been around since the founding of Barovia. Yeah, Robin, Robin will nod. She's going to say, um, what sort of urgency do you have for this? Is uh, we have we have a couple of things to do here in town. Um, if if we were able to promise that we would be able to to do this uh, as, as soon as we leave town as our next stop, would you perhaps be willing to advance this little payment by way of room and board for a couple of days until we can leave? If you agree to do this, we can simply take from your your pay the room and board till then. Essentially, we will put you on the house tab, and then you will pay out of the tab from your reward. Robin or, will look. if you agree to go tomorrow morning, we can give you half the money up front. Robin will look across the table at whoever else is around to see if anybody has any thoughts. Robin, we are... Planning on leaving soon. Uh, probably in the next day or so, or or as early as tomorrow. Uh, Danica says, "If you agree to go tomorrow to look into this, I will comp your rooms for tonight." And give you the 25 gold right now that you might have it to run your errands and do whatever it is you need. This is our family. It is important to us. Yes, um, it is and a fair offer. Robin? Can you... I... Yeah, uh, she's going to she's going to look around the table. She's going to say, uh, could you give us... Just a few moments to, to discuss this so that we can be all on the same page. Of course, of course. Excellent. We we will let you know uh, before we leave uh, for the morning. We will let you know one way or another. All right. Uh, currently, it's just you guys and uh, this quiet drunk uh, who goes by the name of Richard. Uh, Rictavio is still asleep. Um... Danica kind of goes over to him and sees how he's doing and all that jazz. Uh, Erwin and his two sons are uh, behind the bar uh, getting ready for the day. The children are ushering back and forth from the kitchen area. Robin, uh, if we delay, Victor could be, or he is, unstable. And is has kind of led the boy on that we would be escorting him. Right. Well, I mean, he could. We could get him out of town and fulfill that portion of things. I. Jesus we are think. looking into the washer woman today. As much what? as I hate to say it, but she is a in a spree of bad luck.
And she's already under suspicion by the Baron. What all do we have to do in town here before we leave? I, I, I know we're trying to let a couple of people heal up. Uh, Jason and Irina both have wounds still. Mm, yes, uh, Wayne went over to Bowinski's. Uh, something there. Anne has her wag. Other than just or scrapes and prunes. We don't have any cash to speak of, so we don't have any shopping to do. Yeah. I mean, unless... this gives us some payment money for anything we want to pick up here on the road. And gets us another night free where we don't have to pay and try to come up with coin for this evening. Correct. Stay here in town. It'd be a, a scramble to, uh, uh, hammer up the, the seven gold for the, the inn. Uh, Robin will look over to Ismark. Ismark, do you know anything about what's happening at the vineyard? I mean, I know that we've had a wine shortage. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is causing it. it. I mean, that is the only vineyard left in Barovia. The others have uh, closed down or been um, destroyed. Yeah, I know we've heard of this a couple of times, but we were only just starting to feel the uh, the effects of the wine shortage when you guys arrived, actually. Um, my father had uh, everyone start to tighten things up a bit. Um, as we had sort of realized there was no new deliveries coming, even from the Mardikovs. I assume that they were stopped at uh, Velikai and just didn't bother coming to the valley, but now I find out they never even came to Valakai. Yeah, Robin's just kind of nodding. Um, she's going to say, you know, it, uh, where, which, which direction is the vineyard in? Do we, do we know on the map where that is? Uh, uh to the west. The west. Yes. Along the way, I think we can come across this wagon that is misplaced and we could also potentially make a quick detour to the lake uh here near valakai where the vistani said that the uh the young girl who is missing might might be that could be a worthwhile thing to try to get on the continue to be on the good side of the Vistani a bit. Uh, do we want to be on the good side of this Aaron Carl person? Isn't he pretty much the scum that got us here? I mean, he's powerful and serves Strahd. And the Vistani in general, I think, are uh, powerful people who can travel. I, I, I don't know that they are... I, I know they serve Strahd, but I don't know that they are evil in and of themselves. I think they just... That is their situation here in the this world. Uh, if we could continue to be on their good side. Uh, Madame Ava helped us. And, I mean, it's a young girl that we're talking about who's in trouble and missing. It. I don't know why we wouldn't look for her. We've been promised rewards if we can rescue her. They were a third party, not from the individual themselves. Here we have just as much a family connection. We're getting money up front and night stay. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, we could we could kind of do this and just go in that direction. I, I think we kind of have a. I don't, I don't think it would really be out of the way to do that to do that and. We can just kind of go in a in a row and hit those things. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull out the um, I'll pull out our map case and lay it on the table. Oh, oh, oh! All right, uh, I'll take you guys over to your map page. Because the the uh, I mean, there's two lakes here. There's there's this huge one, and then there's uh, yeah, this one over here. Oh, uh, Ismar says better talk. Is that one? Uh, Zah, 
uh, Zarovich this one. Right, and I believe this is the one that they said. Well, it's named after Strahd's father. Ugh, shit, it's named after the Dark Lord's father, so <laughs> it would be um, the King's Lake, I suppose. Mm. Um, this lake is where uh, around the area where um, Ez lost her wagon was near Lake Baratok. According to Blinsky, um, a day southeast of, or sorry, southwest of Valkai are the ruins. That would likely be whatever this is right here of Argon Vostholt. This, of course, is meta knowledge because this has not been shared with the party yet. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just figured. Yeah, we've heard, we've I just heard figured, of some ruins. Yeah, I figured while we're on the uh, the map, I would point it out to you guys. How do you spell Ar Argon Vostholt? How indeed. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'll post it in the chat. Perfect. Our... Oh, I got close. Mm. And this is the vineyard. All the way over here. But it's a faster journey in so much as you're not taking this windy-ass uh, road like you took from the valley to Valakai. That's why it's only a day and a half uh, on foot. So. And what was the name of this lake? Uh, uh, the, the this lake one. right here, uh, Lake Zarovich. Uh, hold on. Mm, yeah. You you got it. Yeah. Right now, I feel like we need. Weaponry to protect ourselves and cash if we're going to be make any sort of stay here more comfortable. Oh, you hear a voice from the top of the stairs say, um, So you're looking for you're looking for um, fast cash, like faster than what is being offered, uh, and you see that it is the Bard Rictavio. He says, uh, yeah. I... I hear things in here. I might have some leads if you... want to hear them. We're certainly willing to hear opportunity. Mm. Yeah, have a seat. Okay. All right, he comes down the stairs and he says, um, all right, so I love the Markovs very much. And Danica is this, my, my savior. Um, helping them, not a bad idea. They're well connected and you're not gonna find much better people in this God's forsaken place than this family, but but, even though the family is known for the generosity, Erwin can be a little bit, a little bit tight with his money. Um, if this goes well for you guys, it could be very, very, very uh, lucrative. But, only in a money and support kind of way. But, the Baron is loaded and in a little crazy. If you're willing to dive into some morally muddy water, I'm sure he has all sorts of nasty things he'd like done um, on the DL, that's to say the down low, um, to kind of get that taken care of. But the washerwoman is also pretty wealthy and well-connected, and as far as I know, she's got this guy named Ernst, uh, Ernst Lenk, I think his name is. He makes his way all over town, uh, causing all sorts of mischief. But 
he's one man, and from what I understand, he has coin and is frequently looking for people to help him uh, get his mistress's work done faster. Now, the Vistani are absolutely loaded. I don't know if that's something you want to pursue, but they have more gold, more treasure, more resources than anyone else. That's my understanding of the situation. And from what I could tell, this guy over here, Richard, guy's loaded. Absolutely, ridiculously wealthy. And apparently, he's got a wagon over at the uh, Erisek, uh wa Wagoneers that's real nice. Like, reinforced uh, and allegedly locked up pretty tight. And he just gave him a ton of gold up front and said, don't let anybody mess with it. He just drinks all day. Just drinks and stares off into nothing. But where did he get all the money from? Does he even need all the money? I don't know. But there's a lot of money floating around in Valkyrie. Just depends what you're willing to do to get it. Anyways, I, I probably just made things more confusing. I, I don't know. Yeah, it seems like everyone... Uh, there's a lot of cash here. If I, if I had my way, I would help. I would help the Marticons, because it's the right thing to do. But... I just wanted you to know that there was a lot of, a lot of other people with a lot of loose change. So... Uh, and then he kind of walks past you guys uh, over to the Marticons, uh to speak with them. And then he kind of heads to the kitchen. So I guess the question then is, how much do we really want to get involved in not the big picture politics, but the backbiting politics of the town if we were to stay here? Or... A saying here is dependent on whether or not we take Victor. Exactly. Well, Irene says, I have a question. What if we talk to the worship woman and mm -hmm. she's like, She's like, listen, the, the you-know-who, the, the, the big B, right? He's, uh, he needs to get out of here. We need new leadership. New leadership, the kind that opens up the trade routes again, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I need some muscle to make that happen. I mean, that could solve a lot of problems. Robin's going to look at his mark and see how he reacts to that. Uh, Ismark scowls and says, um, I mean, it would solve some problems, but I feel like I don't think the Baron's the kind of guy who's going to give up his uh, hereditary position um, willingly. And I don't think... Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Isaac is someone who's going to uh, let others easily rest control of this place from the Baron. Yes, and... And I don't think the no Baron's going to do that. I don't want Isaac taking over for the Baron. But I don't think the Baron's going to let go alive. And I don't think Isaac is going to let the Baron die without a fight. Or get put in a prison somewhere, I suppose. Yes, yeah. yeah. We see, don't even know if this watcher woman yeah. is worth supporting. Agreed. All of Ismark's forehead muscles just not into one, like, kind of golf ball, like, in between his eyes. And Irene says, I know, this is way more complicated than just, hey, buddy, open up the trade routes. Oh, I can't. There's a big troll blocking the road. You need to kill it. Like, that's kind of what I was hoping for. Mark says, I would fight ten trolls if I didn't have to make these kind of decisions with the politics and all that. I just need to tell father what's going on. And Robin's again, once we're working to, working to the washerwoman today, 
After that, you can be on your way. And what happens here... Well, we'll be Wait, here in the on, on your way? What are you talking about? And Eastmark looks at you, like, kind of side-eyes you, Jason, uh, but lets out, like, a sigh, and he says, uh, Yes, after today, I will be leaving tomorrow morning, and I will be returning to the village. I, um... I need to let father know everything that's happening here. And she says, but you can't make that journey by yourself. There's, it's too dangerous. We lost Chris on the way here. Like Chris, Chris died on the way here. You're not going to make that journey by yourself. And he says, uh, I, I have to make the journey myself. Someone needs to go back and tell father what has happened. And you, you can't return. Not, not yet. And she says, is this because of what happened with, is this because of what happened with, with her? Is that what you're, so I'm, you're banishing me? Uh, and he says, no, I'm trying to keep you safe. This is a big city. It's got the church, it's got guards, it, it, there's, there's witnesses here. Our village is our hunting grounds. Anastasia does whatever she wants there. No one can stand against her here. Huh? You do not see vampires. Huh? There are no werewolves. This town is secure and safe. And these allies, huh? They will do a better job of keeping you on the move. At least until we get this figured out. Uh, and she, she just kind of like stares at him and you see tears welling in her eyes and she just stares out the window and he says, don't worry, I will, I It'd will be like an adventurer, Arena. We have a story from of, of a traveler who went around the world in 80 days, seeing one festival, magical place after another. I mean, I don't want to stop going on the adventure, but I don't want Eastmark to stop either. I thought we'd just finish this up and then keep going. It's stupid that you have to go back. And he says, I won't be alone. I was speaking with some of the uh, merchants, and uh, we're going to put together a small caravan to head back to the village. That way, they can do some trade. I have not run it past the Baron yet, because I'm hoping to get some information for him that would make him more likely to allow these merchants to make one last journey. And basically tell him that the wagons will allow us to bring people back here safely. I don't know, it seems like a good idea. Robert will not. It does sound like a good idea, Ismark. I, that does make sense. She'll, she'll look around the table. I think what we should do is let Danica know that we need to talk to the rest of the party. I think we should double check with that Richard fellow over there and see what his story is. And then I think we should go and visit the Watcher Woman yeah. and see what see what we learn and we'll have a much better understanding in a few hours of what we need to do. All right. Would serendipitously this be a good time for the Toy Store group to get back to check on the other group? Yay, nay. That would make sense to me. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. I guess um, as a inner, I'd probably tell to Robin, whatever we decide, let's try to keep it between us. I'm not sure what Ez is kind of going, but she's too eager. As if, as if summoning her, you, you hear the... Uh, the squawking of some ravens uh, as one of them flies out the open front door and you see the the four of them, uh, the three people in Dunbar return. Yeah. Uh, uh, as she's walking in, Robin would just kind of whisper back to Jay. She's going to say, I don't disagree, but at the same time, I welcome an extra fighter or uh, assistance on the road. And then as, as they come in, she just kind of like wave and like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> kind of. Right, right. Crash, we're by a 
good passive perception and expertise and insight. Uh, kind of. Um, let's see. Off of people's passives, um, you would get a sense that they were discussing. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were probably discussing you while you're gone. They would be fools not to, given. Uh, yeah, yeah. Given the scenario, yeah. Uh, as they'll kind of like walk up to the table, take a seat, um, unwelcomingly, or without needing to be welcomed. Should be good news! We got, uh, Blincy. He's gonna make Anne a new leg and get her a hook hand. And then Anne says, so bring that big warhammer. Yes, but it's gonna take two days. That's too long. I mean, these things take as long as they take, and... For good or for ill, I put up Chris's rifle for collateral, just to ensure that we weren't didn't get painted into corn with promises. But we need twenty five gold to get it back. Leo just stares at you and says, "Un unfucking real, unfucking real." What unfucking real? You weren't using it. Did you trade the cow for some magic whoa, beans whoa. while you were at it? Hey, I bet we probably could use it. And if I were I'm from Earth. It's got to be better than anything we've seen here from Kresik. Okay, so you're meaning to tell me a gun would have been just fine against that mist that killed Chris? We need things that can affect things in this realm. We need allies. The little bartering, little trading. I'll get it back. What do we need is what's in my cards. Then I guess we got to go do that. And you After... won't do whatever it is you want to do. We just need two days. And then Anne should be like at hundred percent ish. And I'm assuming Anne's probably glaring at Wayne for running his mouth and he'll just shut up. I mean Anne Anne wants to go avenge uh Daniel. Like she doesn't understand why you guys aren't focusing on that, honestly. I mean, does she say anything, or is she just giving everyone dirty looks at being, you know, slow? Uh, I mean, she's pretty much just giving you a cold scowl, like uh, everyone assembled here. Mm. Yeah, Wayne shuts up and looks away. Right. Well, if it's another two days before Anne's back to full fighting strength with her leg and arm, uh, then we need to certainly follow up on our leads that we have here in the town um, but didn't she say we would get the bonus if we left tomorrow uh, yes while you guys were gone we got a generous offer from Donica 25 gold up front they pay for the night another 25 when we get back from the vinery it's about a day and day and a half journey over there isn't yeah. that the same deal she gave you before just money up front it was 30 gold last time. 25 up front, 25 when we get back. Plus a, a night. Uh, tonight, our stay here would be comped. We wouldn't have to pay for room and board this evening. What if we can get her just the terms a little? Explain why. You know, Anne is a huge asset to the party. Uh, it's very possible. We have not tried to negotiate this much beyond uh, beyond this yet. It's a fair offer, and we have someone else already expecting not to be here this evening. Mm. Didn't we tell Victor two days? Yeah, but Victor said we said a few days that we would that we would. I don't know if he was listening. I think he listens more than he leads on. He's he, very smart, that boy. He had agreed. She's going to she's going to glance over to the corner where Richard is. We need to talk to, to the Watcher Woman, and we need to talk to uh, Richard, the gentleman over there who's drinking, uh, early morning drinking already, it would appear. Uh, I wonder if that's the same Richard. Maybe he misses his monkey. Uh, the, you, the door opens and a guard walks in. And he looks around at everyone and he says, All will be well! Uh, and you hear some murmurs. Uh, from uh, the Mardikovs, uh, and then he heads over to the bar. 
Right. Uh, Robin's going to stand up. Okay. He says, I'm going to go see if, if he is wealthy. Let's at least see what his story is. And she's going to walk over to okay. the drunk in the corner. All right. As you approach him, he looks up at you with one, one bleary eye. And he, uh, he gives you sort of a, a pained uh, sort of grimace. And he says, uh, eh, eh, what do you want? Uh, my name is Robin Keller, and I had, uh... Like the bird. She'll, she'll not, exactly, like a, like a bird. Uh, I heard that you have a wagon, uh, here in town, and that you might be in need of assistance. Is that, is that possibly, uh, a true rumor that I've heard? Uh, I don't need anything from anyone. It's all who's been talking about my wagon. Who's been talking about my wagon? Uh, Robin's going to uh, kind of glance over her shoulder, shoulder back at the table. And she's going to say, um, uh, it was just a just a rumor that we heard. There's rumors uh, about my wagon. Oh. What kind of rumors? Uh, she'll kind of kind of lean in. She's gonna say, uh, "Well, I, what I had heard was just that um, you you took it to, to the wagon yard and had them paid them a lot of money to to keep it safe." Yeah, and, safe. Yeah, yeah. She's going to she's going to kind of look at him. Look, if if these kind of rumors are out there, is it there might be unsavory people in town who who might not Ooh. want to know what's in that bag. Ooh. Ooh. She says, I don't know who, but uh, my friends and I we could help keep it safe for you if you wanted us to check in on it. We could no, we could, we could do no. it for a small fee. No. Make sure no one's tampering with it. You want a coin? Well, if you're offering. Sit and talk. And he kicks a chair out uh, at you. All right. Yeah, she'll sit. What would you like to talk about? Why? Why are you here? She's going to, you know, it's it, she's not really going to lie to him at all. She's going to kind of like take a, a deep breath and kind of like start in at the beginning and like, like go go from like, well, we aren't actually from here. We're from somewhere else. We came here through magic, got sucked into the worst hell house in the world and just kind of go from there. Oh, wow. OK, yeah, uh, she'll go into it. he does not interrupt you at all. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, we've all listened to audiobooks. This shit's going to take a while. Uh, yeah. What do you guys do while uh, Robin's spending like two hours catching this guy up on uh, what's going on? I mean, she she might give him a slightly abbreviated version. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Do, like, every detail, but like... Okay. Yeah, you know, she'll give him like the ten minute version. Of oh, it. Mm, that's not worth a lot, is it? Oh, uh, okay. That, never mind, never mind. All right. I mean, if he, he asks questions, she would, she would fill in more, but... This uh, guy would very much like to hear your story all right yeah okay. if, if it was if it was delivered well it might be worth something to him all right she you know what she will she will she will spend the time like if he's if he really seems that intent yeah she'll she'll spend some time with him he locks that one blue eye on you it's like a tractor beam mm -hmm. all right uh, Crash, am I close enough to, uh, you know, insight Richard and get a sense of, like, what he's lusting after, uh, like, story-wise? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm going to roll with... I'm going to use one of my demon inspiration for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, he seems extremely interested in the heroic parts of the story and the 
losses accrued during the story. All right. Do I feel like oh. mood music might help with the storytelling? <laughs> um, pr probably not. This guy doesn't seem like a mood music kind of guy. All right. Yeah. Um. All right, Robin, give me a performance. I will do that. You know what? I will use one of my DM inspirations. I, okay. I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like this is somehow worthwhile. Mm. When you finally catch him up, he says, uh, that was a good story. I'm sorry about your, your father. Yeah, me too. The road we walk is nothing but losses. You win to lose. You lose to win. And when you've lost everything, you find out you still had more to lose. I know what you're trying to do. They shall help. Uh, and he uh, he slides a small uh, pouch of, of coins across the table and says, For your story. She'll she'll nod graciously and, and pick up the, the, the coin. And she'll, she'll look back at him and she's going to say, Something tells me you have a pretty interesting story as well. Got lost in the mist. Lost everything. She's gonna nod at the at the little coin pur purse that's still in her hand. She's gonna say, "Obviously not everything." Uh, he kind of just uh stares at you, and he says, "Um." Uh, you have a lot to do today. You're running out of time. Yeah, she'll she'll nod and <sighs> thanks for the uh, the chance to uh, tell the story. It was actually a little therapeutic, being able to talk about some of it. I appreciate it. If you ever feel like talking, no, and we're around, no, if you. Bring me more stories. Yeah, she'll she'll love. I'll keep my ears open. Mm, all right. How much gold is in that? Uh, purse? fifteen gold. During um, Robin's very long story, which mm -hmm. I just tried to eavesdrop in on as much as possible to learn more about these people, um, this is gonna kind of like scoot up next to Jason, mm -hmm. and uh, she's just gonna like lean in and say, "Look, I understand that you may be wary of me, and that I may seem a bit mysterious. When we get out to Valakai." You can ask me any question you want. And it will all make more sense then. Why out of Valakai? It'll... It'll make perfect sense. When I can tell you. Based on an insight. Okay. Go for it. Uh, so, what are you hoping to insight from that? Like, what she means by it? Or if she has ill intent? Or... Hmm. 
that is there something dangerous about this city that she's not saying for reasons why she couldn't say uh i'll message you I'll keep it under advisement. I still don't trust you. That's fine. You Way don't trust more. me now. You will later. Wayne will lead into Robin and say, When you were chatting up Richard, did you get the sense that just any story would do? Or. Did it have to be real? Like, I, I get the sense that he wants something, you know, stories of triumph and loss. But did you get the sense it's got to be real or just it's got to be something that grabs his attention? Did Robin get any sense of that uh, crash? Um, I mean, do you want to give me a... Yeah, do you want to give like me an insight? insight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, you get the sense that this guy cares a lot more than he's trying to let on, and that he hears a lot more than people think, and that he's a lot less drunk than, uh, he's pretending to be, and that he wants these stories because he wants to know what's happening out in the world. Uh, Robin will, will just respond with that. I think... I think that is a friendship that might be worth uh, cultivating more, and that anything that we can come up with, um, yes, loss and gain and uh, heroics are good, but I think I think anything would be of value to him. When you see anything of value, like. <clears throat> I've watched a lot of westerns when I was growing up with, with, as a kid. Like that was my dad's thing. And some of those like are more tragic than others. Um, I mean, do you think he just wants to hear a good story or is it it's it's got to be real? Oh, I think I think the more real the better. So he doesn't want a story. He wants he wants a retelling of what happens. Story of the world. Okay. Par Purple uh, says he he wants the noose. Yeah, Robin's gonna nod. That's right. Maybe told in a colorful way, but I think exactly. My uncle liked moose. He would always try to get people who come to shop to tell him what was happening in the world. He said that being informed was a form of strength. Robin's going to, do, to, to nod at that. He's going to say, you know, that's... Uh... <laughs> there was... I don't know. 20-ish years ago in our world there was uh, some new inventions that came out that let people get information very quickly and um, people said that knowledge was power, information was power and um, she'll kind of glance back over at Richard and kind of say uh, that might apply here I think and this power Problem's going on. And his power. That's true. <laughs> and he's strong. Purple is going to be strong for N. Whatever we do, 
Uh, purple wants to save little girl. Uh, purple wants to go help beautiful lady's father. Uh, purple does not want Arunia and Ismark to be said anymore. Robin's going to smile at Purple. She's going to say, Purple, you're a good man, and I'm glad you're with us. Yeah. If we fix wine, then maybe everyone drink wine and be hippie. Then they can open town again. Speaking of which, we probably ought to, uh, she'll, she'll look over at Ismark, we probably ought to go over to see the Baron's rival, see what we can learn there. Alright, so I'll take you guys out into the town. Are you just arriving at her place, kind of like, uh, you know, we are here, we have come a-calling? I mean, is... is that Does that work? What would what would protocol be? Oof. Because because I, I would imagine Ismark would know the protocol better than we would. So he says, uh, I mean, nobles they like people to give them like a heads up before they show up. Like so they have even if they are able to see you, then they pretend, you know, like they make you wait a little bit. I've seen my father do it. He says it's a control uh, situation. You so don't want to we... seem like you're at the beck and call of someone. Is there a messenger we could send? Something like we that. We are question. technically looking into her for the Baron. We do have the badges. So we show up or like police. Deputy. We're like, knock, knock. This is mm, investigation. That sends the wrong message. If we're trying to send the message. What if? Of... What if one of us shows up with a badge to request an audience? with her I, I don't think you're going to want to go around showing that badge around unless you yeah. want to i think you just send somebody say that uh the burgermaster's son and daughter are visiting uh Valica and they'd like to meet with her i'm sure they'd accept that makes sense leo says i'm on it <laughs> and he uh he heads heads off to the north part of town. Wait, yeah. hold on, Leo, come what, back here. What? What? I guess he does I have mean, jack of all trades now. I was just gonna tell her that the son and daughter of the burgomaster of the Valley of Barovia are in town and would like to meet with her at her earliest convenience, but they're not gonna be in town for very long. So, what works for them? Okay, just you, you like to certainly like to schmooze. And, you know, Robin's probably the most tactful among us. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well, I mean, this gives you guys a chance to prepare. And, I mean, I'm just, you know, going to take a walk. Right? Henry, you want to walk with me over there? Uh, Henry kind of shrugs. Like, yeah, I mean. Um, Remy, did you want to continue to control Henry as a... Uh, companion character or no? Um, I mean, I don't really have uh, like S doesn't really have a connection with Henry. So uh -huh. if anyone else who lost a B team member wants to control him, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Well, for for now, I was gonna. Uh, he'll just go with uh, with Leo. Like if Robin wanted to, since uh, mm -hmm. that'd be fun, but. Remember, when you're in a sanctuary, you guys can shuffle out um, once once you've collected uh, enough uh, B team members that it necessitates shuffling out. You can you can do that. Yeah, I mean, Robin, I don't think has a specific connection with Henry either. Mm -hmm. But if if you don't want to control him anymore, or anything like I mean, I can I could run him in combat or something. But I'm not. I don't. Know. And you can always just drop people off when you're in a sanctuary and just be like. You know what? We'll be back later, video game style. Maybe they'll still be there when you come back. M maybe. 
All right. So they, uh, with Kitten in tow, head off. All right. So you guys have, like, probably a couple hours. So is there anything in particular you still need to take care of in town before they return? Well, um, did, did we want to try and renegotiate the terms of the deal with uh, Danica and uh, Irwin? I think since we, we need an extra day. I think we should do that after we know what's going on with the with the Baroness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we may decide that we need to stick in town longer mm-hmm. because of that, or we may want to go. So we I think just, I think we should. And if we don't leave tomorrow, we just forego the early payout. Right. Um, Wayne will suggest to the party that maybe we could check out the bookstore in the meantime might give us a in with Victor um, or, or possibly g- gather some information. Um, and Robin would also mention the orphanage. Is that something that we want to Can we tackle that in a couple hours? Into? I bet not. Uh, yeah, Victor I did say Lydia had her what, do you, her hands in it? Or a pet project or something? Yeah. And Wayne would sort of share what he learned, just sort of the the vague information he learned about the, the orphanage situation. Like there's kind of a scary mother superior over there, at least as far as uh, Blinsky was, was concerned they were scary. Okay. Um, all right. So the spine mine is uh let's see let me grab the uh, proprietor real quick Mm-mm. nope love these big towns oh man so good uh let's see valakai wow it's a lot of npcs uh let's see bookstore owner ah there we go all right so this is run by a gentleman named uh his name is walpole all right so i guess i'll uh, let's see yeah we don't need a we don't need a formal map for it so um as you enter the musky uh musty excuse me musty uh bookstore uh let's see Ah, all right. I'm getting the uh, the factoids for you. All right. Uh, large two-story bookstore faces the town square. As you enter, candlelight casts a warm glow over the many bookshelves, and you notice the whispering of a few customers. The bookshelves are filled with leather-bound books. A brief glimpse of titles reveals they cover a wide range of subjects, such as history, geography, um, and poetry. There's a small hearth with reading chairs, providing an inviting and cozy atmosphere. A large wooden desk sits in the middle of the room where the proprietor is intensely studying a manuscript, not taking any notice of you. And then uh, I guess here's some here's some flavor uh, image of said uh, establishment if it if it loads up. Um, But the uh, yeah, the man behind the counter is uh, definitely deep in thought as he kind of scrutinizes this manuscript and it seems that he is transcribing it. Uh, there is a bell on the on the desk, the, the circular kind of almost like library counter that he is working behind. Wayne kind of feels after the, the interaction with Blinsky mm-hmm. that there may be a lot of things that are from potentially earth or other realms that have migrated here okay. so he's just going to kind of wander through various sections to see if he dis- finds did, titles that he remembers did they well, migrate like, did they migrate to earth from somewhere else whoa man whoa all right <laughs> yes very earth-centric of me to think yeah 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 <laughs> um 
All right, so I think eventually he would notice if all of you came into the bookstore, he would, yeah, he would look up for what he's doing. And he would look at all of you and say, uh, well now, what do we have here? It seems to be, uh, oh, oh, I, mm-hmm, oh, it's you, Ez. Uh, who are these, uh, mercs you found? Are, are, you, are you there, Ez, or did I just make him look like a crazy person? So, Is is anybody there? Am I completely disconnected? Is there no... No, no oh, I hear you. No, uh, oh, no, no, I was muted. I was muted. Um, uh, okay. I mean, they're... We just ran into each other in the tavern. Ah. Well, um... Ah. Uh, the name is Walpole. Um, this is the spine mine, and I'm very pleased, uh, to make your acquaintance. Uh, I don't know any of you, but I feel like I do. I've seen your sort before. I don't suppose you have any books to sell. Robin does uh, not. We do have three books. Oh, uh, sure. Let me take a look at them. What do you have? Um, starting time, war and XP, and flying into my pass. Oh, uh, might I peruse those? Uh, certainly. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, okay. Hmm. Wait, weren't those books still belong to the ah. Master's library? Hmm. Very interesting. Is Arenia with us? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I feel like Arenia would be with you. Um, I, I'm assuming no, everybody's just kind of wandering around together. Maybe she is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she is browsing books uh, elsewhere. She does have uh, disrupted equilibrium, so she's just kind of stumbling about, because uh, because bonk on the noggin. Uh, he says, uh, "Oh, these are very good books. They're very good books." Um, my initial appraisal, I could uh, I could certainly give you thirty for the lot, uh, thirty gold, of course. You you know what gold is, right? Uh, yes. Good, okay. good. That keeps things a bit easier. I don't want any paper money. I hate this stuff. I love paper, but no one cares for paper money. And then he says, um, Now, if you if you were willing to leave them here with me till this afternoon, I could give them a fine appraisal. They might be worth a bit more. But um, if they're worth a bit less, I'll try to be as fair as I can with my original estimate. Or are you interested in doing an exchange? Uh, and you now have access to his shop, which is right here. Where you could, uh, you could buy such wonders as... A magnifying glass for 100 gold pieces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you need glasses <laughs> and they break out on the road, then you got the magnifying glass and you're all set. That's true. That's true. Who who makes a character that needs glasses? That's... Uh... <laughs> so. Would, uh... Oh yeah. Could you transcribe the books, and that way they can keep them? I'm sure there's still lots of knowledge. Oh, that takes forever, and these aren't that great that I need uh, an extra copy, but I suppose if time permitted, I could, uh, I could look into it. I'm sort of working on something already, though. Hmm. And I don't think those books are ours to make a judgment call on. Those belong to Arena, yes? 
Wait, those aren't your books and you're going to sell them? Not mine. Anne says, do you have any books about people who die from being too scared? Uh, and he, uh, he looks at her meaningfully and he says, uh, yes, uh, yes, I do. Is that, is that something that you're interested in? Um, hmm. Died of fear. Hmm. Yes. Well, this book here, the Infernal Book of Archfey, it uh, it has a lot of information that might be useful to you. Um, it covers uh, uh, the more powerful fey creatures that prey upon the living and the mortals of this realm. And she says, uh, give it to me. <laughs> uh, and he, he raises his eyebrows behind his glasses and says, I'll, I'll sell it to you for 25, uh, for 25 gold. And she says, she turns to you, Wayne, and says, give me 25 gold so I can purchase that book. And I don't have 25 gold. I don't think we have that kind of money. But we can make it, and then you could buy the book in. Uh, there's so many steps. Everything takes too long. You're a strong woman. Have you been to... Have you... Do you know of this woman, Morgantha? I think we went over it. Um... Uh... Well, do I think you? Her name is familiar, yes, but you talk of all these things to do when the only thing we need to do is avenge Daniel. It's not that complicated. Uh, and the and the bookkeeper, he's just sort of like slowly putting the book away, <laughs> kind of backing away from the counter a little bit. Well, um. And he says, uh, "Well, I'm going to get back to work." Um, if you see something it's you're interested in, let me know. And if you have a request, let me know. And if you come across any rare tomes or documents, manuscripts, uh, texts, uh, let me know. I'll give you the best deal. Better than anyone else in town. Thank you. And revenge is very complicated, then. Wayne's going to give Robin a look like, do we need to go outside and talk to her? Well, I'm not going to take Dom's character too far without Dom, but essentially you have obstinance um, and and hyper-focus to deal with. Hmm. Also, she has very little respect for anyone's opinion except Ez using her Dragon Ball Z strength scanner. Uh, I mean, Robin doesn't have anything to do with the books. Like that is yeah, yeah. There, are, there are other people do, but I think she would ask the shopkeeper, "Is there any place? Are there any other shops in town that might have information on like uh, healing, alchemy, potions, that sort of thing?" Uh, yeah, of course, of course. There's um, there's an apothecary, and there's also an herbalist. Two, two sides of a similar coin. If I was looking to maybe learn how to make my own potions? Well, it depends what sort of potions you're hoping to make. The, uh, the make you feel good kind, you go to the herbalist. The make you feel bad kind, uh, you probably go to the apothecary. Understood. The... Uh, Apothecary is north of the town square. The healer, she also is a midwife, she seems very busy, uh, is west of here, towards the church. Alright, uh, Robin will take note of that and thank him. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you're looking for Lila's Herbal. And you're looking for Stefanovich and Sons Apothecary. But between you and me, he doesn't have any sons. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I will just, you know, as you discover the stores, I will just add them to the dashboard kind of thing. And then we can assume that you you did fantasy shopping where all your dreams come true. The guy deal for you, essentially. <laughs> so, with, with your mountains of gold that you've accumulated. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, where to now? I mean, I think we're we're just waiting to get word. Oh, you just kill in time. All right, I got you. I got you. I'll from, throw. From... Uh, let's see. You've got yeah. the straight arrow, the cracked anvil, the spine mine. You're in the town square, so I will go ahead and throw uh, the trapped paw on there. I will assume you, you you poked your heads in there. And the trapped paw is essentially the leather worker and hunting hunting supply shop. This is the, I guess, the big bass uh, shop or whatever. There we go. Bastro. Bastro, there we go, yeah. And then you guys go into the Aerosic Stockyard and Market. So I'll throw that down as well. That's just the general store, essentially. Alright. And uh, I think I think Robin she would try to seek out maybe the herbalist. Okay. Yeah, Ez would like to go there as well. Sure. Because I know Robin had, had been planning maybe to go Alkahest, but since we've lost everyone, why, why like don't, might. Yeah, why don't we uh, why don't we just assume some uh, wibbly wobbly timey wimey while you wait for uh, Henry and uh, Leo to get back, and I'll just put the remaining stores into chat. All right. All right. Her kit is not that expensive. Uh, let's see. And we do have one from. Chris. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually the, uh, the recipe book is 25 gold. Okay. Will that recipe book have both, uh, like all of the thing recipes for all the things within nope. alchemy? Um, like, I'm looking for, like, tincture res recipes. So, yeah, so how it works is there are a Google Docs that you guys unlock by doing this. So um, the novice stuff is a book, and then that will include everything at the novice tier. But then after novice, you have to declare a specialization and buy the apprentice version of that particular book. Um, so, for example, if you were interested in Apothecary Apprentice, that's like a separate book that you would then need to to pick up essentially gotcha. yeah uh so and i think i think those are listed on there yes yeah well robin only has 17 gold so she can't mm -hmm. purchase I, I don't think we have 25 gold between us okay so um but soon, but soon, but soon, but soon. Yeah, soon if we take the job, or or take another job. Yes, or somehow sell the books, or do something else that uh, not exactly above board. It seems like in this town. Okay, next question. Um, so could we just go straight into the apprentice book of what we want? to go under or uh yeah you just buy the novice well book some of, the it, de book. it depends because some of them will require uh as ingredients stuff that you would have made in with the novice stuff but the this isn't like a video game in so much as like you could buy one book and everyone could share the book um because all all of the specializations for crafting use the same novice book and all the specializations for alchemy use the same novice book it's the it's the specializations after that where they starts to deviate but currently 
Um, they only have apprentice ones for sale. Every everything above apprentice essentially has to be like quested for or or researched or discovered. Okay. Yep. I could have sworn that I put the novice books in the merchant things. Are they not in there? Or there was then there's nov the novice books under one of them. I think so. My lizard okay. herbal has the alchemy novice. Okay. Yep. And I believe the crafting. But I, don't... But I would look around town for the apprentice tincture book. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, the spine mine, uh, could get you that book. Um, uh, he, he claims, uh, pretty easily, um, for, let's see. Mm. Oh, it'd be very priced though. Uh, he can get it for you, but it'd be, it would be 50 gold. But then, essentially, once you have it, you have all the recipes for it. Are there other ways to unlock the recipes? Um, you could discover them uh, out and about, essentially. Like... Okay. The fastest way to get the most is to just purchase a, a book of recipes, essentially. All right, so while you guys are looking and uh, wishing you had more funds, uh, we will say that about an hour passes, uh, maybe more, and the two of them return, and they say, uh, all right, she said, come on over. Is, is that exactly how she said it? Um, and did well, you speak I with her directly? Or? I know I spoke. I well, we well, we spoke with the young ladies that work for her, and they and they said that she had heard of you and that she was waiting for you to come calling. That she's heard of us. That's what they said. Heard, heard of us or heard of Ismark and Irina. Uh, the two guys look at each other, and Henry says, "Does it matter? I mean, she's, they, they said they'd heard of us. I mean, so anyway, we've only been here less than twenty-four hours. It would make sense for a woman of her status to have ears and eyes around the city. I mean, the town's locked down. Henry says, kind of defensively, like, pretty sure they keep track of anybody new. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, you're, you're probably right." Just trying to get as much job, information before we go in. All right. Speaking of, do you, I mean, the house, I don't know. If Chris was here, he compared it to some Harry Potter shit, but it's not looking too good. Uh, like, like it's falling in on itself or? Yeah, that would be a good way to put it. Um, or it said that she had lots of money, but well, maybe not for repairs. People spend their money in different ways, I guess. Um, but sh I don't know. Do we all need to go? Is the question. I mean, Henry and Leo, I think you have certainly done admirably so far and have earned a rest <laughs> back at the end. I mean, we'll, I mean we can us showing up there as a party of 11 might be a little much. That's yeah. what I'm trying. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Hey, Purple, why don't we grab some lunch? Yeah. He's, I, uh, I, I like and, lunch. Duh, let's go. Ian, why, don't, why don't you go with Purple uh, and keep him company? I, I'm sure you would hate another stuffy meeting as we try to work our way through this as well. She stares down at you and she says, uh, you're my family. And so... I'm gonna listen to you this time. Uh, and then she shoulder checks you and walks past you. Love you too, Anne. 
<laughs> uh. Okay. Um, so, uh, Eastmark catches up with uh, you guys. And this is the group you bring. You Dunbar coming to to tea with uh, Lady Washer? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Unless, I mean, unless someone it, raises every, concerns like about her, it. Everywhere you go, yeah, every was like, at? everywhere you go, people have got puppies and kitties and and all that. But Victor did mention that she her their family is big into cats, which is so weird because. Victor's family is big into dogs. And the two families get along. Look at that subtle writing. Way to go, Jeremy Crawford. I knew you had it in you. Chris Perkins, whichever one of you guys worked on it. Did a great job, guys. This Curse of Strahd adventure, it's got legs, baby. Four of them. Yeah. Times a billion. Yeah. Um, Alright, so we'll head on over. Mm -mm -mm. Washer House. All right. Overview of the Watcher House. Activate. Look at that. Look at that beautiful place. All right. Hold on a second. I'm used to having like more room um, on my main screen, but I'm I'm streaming my main screen, so I got to figure out what I did with the rest with, with the book. All right. There's the book. Got it. No. No. Uh, there's there's the book. Okay. Whew. Shouldn't be that painful. All right. Uh, let's see. Washer house. Absolutely killing me tonight. All right. Um. Let's see. Oh. Uh. Rumors that you would know as for being in town as long as you have been. Um. No one hates the burgermaster more than Lady Washer. It is not even a secret. Like, you, you've heard this many times. Um, to say that they have, like, a family feud is... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, let's see. It's a, it's a well-known, it's a well-known feud. Yep. In the, uh, in the, in the settlement. Alright. Washer House. I, Burger I don't even think I'd have to say it aloud to everybody after having dinner at the... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but but yeah. It, it's it's mutual is what I'm trying to say. It goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes both ways. Alright. Let's see. All that spookiness. Ah, here we go. Okay. Uh, Lady Washer. Alright. So, the front... Uh, yeah. Um, the property uh, displays a old uh an old victorian style stone house that seems disgusted with itself a slouching roof hangs heavy over furrowed gables moss covered walls sag and bulge under the weight of this excess vegetation uh, as you study the house's sullen count, uh, countenance you hear the edifice actually groan only then do you realize the extent to which this house hates what it has become. I mean, as far as flavor text goes, that's pretty damn good. Um, all right. There is a, a woman working the garden, and as she sees you approach, she moves to open the gate and says, uh, Oh, you're here to see the missus, then? We are. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Um, I'll I'll fetch her right away. Uh, and just follow me. And she leads you to the front door. Um, and you see that there is a stained glass um, panel. Um, three stained glass uh, panels on the, uh, on the door that are old and leaded and grimy. And it is hard, hard, if not impossible, to see through them. She goes through the door and leaves you on the front step as she heads inside. Okay. Uh, she returns about five minutes later and says, um, oh, All right, then. She'll be seeing you in her, um, in her study. Um, just take off, your, um, take off your boots if they're muddy and I can take your cloaks. It's, a, it's actually a nice day. There's no rain. 
thank you. And your name was? Oh, my my name? Uh, you, you really want to know? Uh, is that proper? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm Amalthea. Uh, and, and she, thank you. she smiles at you real big. Uh, thank you for, for your warm greeting. And, uh, like, do we have cloaks? Is that even a thing that we have? <laughs> Boy, we I have hope, eight cloaks. I hope have, so. Like, eight... yeah, it's like, it's like winter in Seattle weather in the summer here. So, I mean, definitely hope you have it. Uh... But maybe not. I don't know. If you haven't, you guys have been pretty miserable. Though you do have your modern day Seattle clothes, so you probably, you know, yeah. if you had jackets and stuff like that. Uh, it's up to you. You don't have to um, hand your stuff over. No, Robin, Robin would hand over her jacket or, okay. or whatever. Cool, cool, cool. Just as I planned. Uh, all right, so I'll take you guys into the home. Jacket and so, Bone Berserker helmet. She'll hand it. No. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm kidding. So with the, the the Washer family, like with their cats, like are there just like cats all over? All over the place. If any of your characters had a fear of cats or cat allergies, you would be in a very bad situation. How, how, how is Dunbar responding to the cats? Is he like wanting to go and chase everything or? Dunbar realizes very quickly that he is vastly outnumbered by these cats, and these cats um, seem to be um, very confident in their ability to take care of business. Okay. All right. Doing that thing where he's like walking between your legs. <laughs> yeah, like he's definitely flexing, right? He's definitely like you know giving some gruffs, some you know some low rumbles, but he's <laughs> he is not criking. Or Bjorking, or any of that. Is their crest actually a cat on the on the gate? Is that like the family? Uh, yes. Okay, so they're like really into cats. Yes, just like the other families really into dogs. <laughs> yep. It's the wrong session. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's see. I will take you into. Oh, um, as you are taking off your um your coats, if you are, um, a girl dressed as a um, maid approaches uh, and she says um, oh uh, well then I'll take you into the study she's almost done with her current meeting and I'll take you over to the actual map now with all this uh, all this build up here uh, here we go activate okay so um, the parlor um, here, three elegant couches surround an oval table made of black glass. All are set in front of a blazing hearth, above which hangs the portrait of a smirking nobleman, sporting a broken nose and a tangle of, gr of hair graying at the temples. Several smaller portraits hang along the northern wall. Uh, you guys can see into a lavish dining room, and um, you can see that Lady Fiona Washer... Uh, is an older woman who looks like she came right out of a uh, gothic horror movie. She's got like, just like the Barrett and his wife. She's got like the um, the gray streak in her hair, um, the heavily lidded eyes, the uh, mouth that looks like it is smiling but also plotting your death, uh, the high pruned collar that's like maybe I'm a vampire. I don't know. Want to find out? Uh, the pale complexion, uh, the the whole the whole thing. Um, she is a small woman, uh, maybe like 5'2". She is talking to a dude who looks like he would have really enjoyed the punk rock scene in downtown London in the mid-80s. And uh, they are talking to each other. And their conversation, if you, I mean, I'm assuming, of course, you're going to eavesdrop. Uh, he says, uh, well, 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 listen, they're going to be, oh, there they are. We'll finish this later. But, uh... Don't forget what I said. Things are happening fast now. Faster still. Time's running out. Uh, and he does a over-the-top bow to her. And as he walks past you, uh, Robin, he, uh, he smiles at you. Um, in a somewhat lecherous way but maybe more just to tease you than to actually be lecherous. And then he kind of swivels around the corner. 
Uh, Lady Fiona does not stand as you guys enter, uh, but motions to the couches and says, uh, Madalena, um, it's almost noon. It's noon. Why don't you go and see... Why don't you go and see if, um... <sighs> why don't you head to the kitchen and get some lunch? Huh? And go ahead and bring that lunch out here. We'll just eat it here in the lounge. No need to bring it to the table. Uh, and she says, uh, oh, right, right away, ma'am. Uh, and she heads back the way you guys came and apparently into the kitchen. And uh, as she opens the door to the kitchen, uh, she says, uh, she says, Wavit, uh, it looks like there's going to be a lot of people for lunch. And then you hear, oh, uh, coming from the kitchen as the, uh, the kitchen door closes. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, uh, you guys find your places on the couch, paper doll style. Uh, Ernst Lanark, uh, or sorry, Ertz Larnack, uh, heads around the corner. And then, uh, Lady Washer kind of, uh, settles into the cushions of the couch. And she says, uh, oh, all right, um, do you want to eat first, or should we just get right to business? Robin's well, honestly are... kind of waiting for Ismark or someone else, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ismark is going to sit uh, across from her. Yeah, that seems good. And Irene will sit over here. And he says, um... Um, yes, uh, Lady Fiona Washer. I am, uh, she says, I, I know who you are, but go on. And he says, uh, uh mm. I am Ismar Kolyonvich, and I am the son of the Burgomaster of Barovia Valley, uh, Kolyon Endorovich. This is my sister, Irina Kolyana, and, um, I am looking for help. I need help. And she says, Yes, I'm... I'm sure you do need help. I'm sure you need a lot of help, given the situation that the Burgermaster of Valakai has put all of us in. You poor boy. Your family suffered so much, and now you continue to suffer. A pity. And he says, Uh... Well, the, uh, yes. Uh. And she says, you, you can pour yourself some wine. I, I think I'll have a cup. And she uh, leans forward to uh, kind of pour herself some wine. She says, um, so, what do you need help with, Ismar Kolyanovich? And he says, um, well, the trade roads have been closed down for three months. And the village is suffering. A um, priest, he lost his uh, his magic, and we were relying on supplies that never came, medicine that we needed that never arrived, and then of course there's a wine shortage, and it's just a lot. It's it's a lot, and I just. I have these mercenaries. They helped me travel here. We. We came to meet with the Burgomaster, and he's just, um... And then Lady Fiona Watcher says, He's just completely fucking batshit? Crazy? Uh, and Irenia kind of, like, lets out a nervous laugh. And Eastmark says, I would not say that, but I feel that... Uh, I just don't know what to do. I just need... I need to bring news back home that the trade routes are open. I need to know that there's a way through all this. I, I came here looking for answers and all I am running into is more questions and more puzzles and more I intrigue. That's not what I am after. I am after restoring the order of things. And he kind of like looks over at you, Wayne. Like, eh, 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 
Uh, Wayne will nod at uh, Eastmark and say, we are looking for solutions, and I think our goals may be one of the same. Oh. That is very encouraging to hear. Very encouraging to hear. Um, it would be tactless on my part to say that the uh, Baron is batshit crazy, but I do not feel that you are far off the mark. Just it would be rude of us to say that as guests in this, this town. And um, his decisions to wall off Valakai from the rest of the world do more harm than good, and it would seem that uh, your family has a greater scope of vision uh, for Valakai, as Frankly. well as other reasons to uh, want change to come about. As you're saying that, uh, the, the maid returns and begins sitting down platters of food. There is uh, a bowl of cucumber salad, which is just cubed cucumber and tomatoes with mayonnaise and uh, other seasonings. Uh, there is another bowl that contains what looks like tuna salad at first glance. Um, and there is a tray with assorted uh, dry biscuits and uh, crackers on it. And then there is a, a plate full of uh, different cheeses and whatnot. And then uh, she leaves another two bottles of wine and additional glasses and, uh, and, and excuses herself. <laughs> uh, as she leaves, Robin's going to uh, kind of like wait for her to, to, to exit so there's mm -hmm. not other people listening. She's going to say, uh, Lady Watcher, uh, to be quite frank, we had dinner last night with the Baron and his family, and the Baron laid out his understanding and vision of what he wants for this town, and mm -hmm. was quite was quite clear with us on what he believes and thinks needs to happen here. And she'll gesture around. We are all outsiders from here, even uh, obviously Irina and. Ismark are from Barovia. We're from even further beyond that. We we don't specifically have a horse in this race other than well, our friends Ismark and Arinia, we wish to help them. But aside from that, as far as Vlaki is concerned, we are very open-minded right now, I think is maybe the best way to say it. And we would appreciate hearing from you what your plans and vision for this town might be. Hmm. And where you could see us fitting into those plans. Mm hmm Well, I think that the time of the Valakoviches is rapidly approaching the end of the line. The man has been touched by madness. He is abandoning all reason and pursuing, by all accounts, a fool's errand. I want to see the town prosper once again. It cannot do so under its current regime, and there is no way that he would relinquish his title without a fight. And as long as he has Isaac Strasny, he is confident he will win any fight. And she, she eyes all of you meaningfully. And she says, um, But if something were to happen to him, well, I think the mayor, the baron, the burgomaster would find himself in a bit 
a bit, uh, a bit exposed, a bit more open to negotiating, to maybe taking a break. That is bold. What? What is bold? What? What? Did the, my observation that if Morning Lord preserve us, anything happened to Isaac Strasny, that he would be uh, more exposed. I mean, I'm just stating the obvious here. Uh, You're not lady... thinking untoward thoughts, are you? No, we're not. It's just it's a. Uh... Considering the lockdown the uh, Baron has on this town, it is a, um, it flies in the face of his edicts is all. Mm. And Wayne will sort of give her a slow, sort of knowing nod, like, I get what you're saying, mm. and I'm just trying to be tactful about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She returns the nod. As she loudly crunches down on what anyone who's eating it knows is not tuna salad, um, but some kind of fish salad. It's a very, like, heavy, oily, like, heartier kind of tasting fish than, uh, than tuna, despite having a somewhat similar appearance. You said you want the town to prosper, but... How would it prosper? How would it prosper? How would it prosper? Well, we would reopen the trade routes. We would figure out what's happening over at the winery. We would send aid, medicine, holy men to the Valley of Barovia. We get them back on their feet. Can I incite her? Yeah. Rotten Robin would like uh, the insight as well. And I will will point out I have advantage if uh, she has hostile intent. Okay. She has or... no no hostile intent towards you guys, and all of the things she's saying are things she does intend to do. Robin would ask. Um, what oh we would also release the children from the from from the stocks how do you keep the morale of a community intact when you're torturing their children did did we see children in stocks we heard about it from the uh the lady when we went we, to go we visit probably the won't find them, to be honest yeah some of the Uprousers from the last festival got thrown in the stocks. Some of them are on the younger side. Like, like some, like under ten. Oh, I Would guess. You... I guess it's also worth mentioning that if yeah, you guys were in the town square. So if you had looked over at the stocks, they are all, um, in addition to being in the stocks, being forced to wear paper mache donkey uh, heads. Like, oh my God. <laughs> like Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah, you know? you know, like like that, but paper mache. As if to say, I'm a jackass. Yep. So <laughs> let's say, Ethic Strasny went missing. Mm, a terrible thing. And of course, and you were able to rest the power needed to restore the city mm. would you open it back up to all of course and what would your relationship with the lord of the land be with the town here with strad von zarovich robin will nod he is the lord of the land if he wanted access to the town he would have it as he would have it now I would not stand against him. That would be a fool's errand. It would endanger the lives of the people to do so. Robin's going to be kind of watching Ismark again, like, as she answers to see... 
like if he thinks that is the correct answer or not. He looks uh, disappointed, but in the same way that we all are disappointed every day <laughs> by the okay. world. Yeah. And she says, I mean, um, she says, the Washer family has always been loyal to the uh, Von Zarovich line. We, my ancestors served Strahd's ancestors on to infinity, to, to the, the family trees could barely be discerned. Regarding Isaac, hypothetically, have you... I, I, I suppose I consider myself a very staunch ally of uh, Strahd von Zarovich, if I'm being honest. Regarding Isaac, have you have you any f ideas uh, how theoretically, hypothetically, uh, he might disappear? Well, is this something you have ever thought about as a purely a flight of fancy, of course? Well, my oh. man uh, Ernst, um, he's a man about town, and there is a curfew. So in order to get around town, he has to be very familiar with the routes that the different patrols take through the city. Um, so he knows where certain people would be at certain times of any particular time of day. We do have a small... Conflict of interest when it comes to Isaac, perhaps. As Robin glances over to Irina, there is perhaps some desire to see that he does not come to any permanent harm. Oh, well, obviously, no one would want some harm to happen to the captain of the guard. But that would complicate things regardless. Um, and Irenia says, I just um do you have a washroom? I can I the excuse for a moment? Uh and then uh Madalena appears whoosh, like a fucking ninja and is like, R right this way. And then she says, uh, Wavit, it looks like they're, they're winding down on lunch. You make sure desserts are ready. And you hear, Wah! coming from the, uh, the kitchen. Uh, as Irina leaves the room, uh, Eastmark uh, says, I understand what you're asking. And, um, I just, I just need some time to think about it. Um, do you have anything else, maybe, that you could tell us that, I don't know. Um, why would you be a better choice than the the Baron. Uh, and she lets out a peal of laughter, and she says, um, <laughs> other than everything else that you already know? Uh, well. First of all, I don't waste my wealth in uh, appearances. She kind of motions around the, the house. Uh, I try to be tidy and tight with my money and I intend to do the same for this town I will not be bankrupting it with festival after festival after festival forcing people to march through the streets at all hours of the night uh, wearing costumes and uh, parades and all of this other nonsense I will not be shutting down uh, our public education to fund such festivals. I... 
The list goes on and on, boy. The money, the sheer volume of gold that has been sunk into these festivals, well, it goes back months. Uh, and she, uh, she just kind of, like, sits back and, um, just, like, you can see that she's, uh, she's keen minding this shit. And she says, uh, we have the upcoming festival. The Wolfshed Jamboree, the March of Flowers, the Dance of the Living, St. Andrew's Gala. That one costs a pretty penny. Uh, Good Midday Smash, Unveiling of Light, Parade of Stars, Celebration of the Titans, if you could believe it. Bringing the Cavani myths to the forefront. Lantern Fest, that one was actually pretty nice. <sighs> Candle Celebration. We wouldn't have had Lantern Fest without it. The Carnival of Stakes. Talk about asking for it. Raven's Feast. Day of Eternal Rest. Every ten days, we have had to endure one festival after another. As I watched the community's savings, the, the money that is taxed from the people for the people squandered on these celebrations. It makes me ill to think of it. And now, knowing what this was all building towards, it's no wonder. He might as well have everyone signed up for a suicide cult. Uh, and then Irene is kind of standing in the doorway. It says, um, th th thank you. So, if there's only two options, Ismar Kolyanovich, I don't know how much more needs to be said. But my family line, that my dear husband, Morning Lord, preserve him and speed his recovery, my family's bloodline are of the noblest lineage. We are well suited to inherit the mantle of leadership of this fine town. I have lived my life in service and bureaucracy and fiscal management. That oaf needs to be removed from office. I am risking much by telling you this, but you have everything to lose. Your father would never have agreed to let her come here unless things were very bad. And Eastmark just looks super somber. Irina has shown herself to be very capable in our journey here. What makes you say that she would be in danger? Oh, she's she's the rose of the valley. Um, such a a beautiful young woman, traveling the world. Uh, there's all sorts of undesirables who might try to take her. I see. It is her symbolic nature. Ah, uh, here's the uh, figgy pudding. Uh, and she puts down the figgy pudding. I'm so sorry, guys. That's what they're serving. And I mean, it's not mud. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but black treacle? Oof. Oof. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> uh, Lady Doctor uh, uh, Water, can I ask mm -hmm. you about your book club that we've heard about oh you've heard of my book club yes we uh we meet um a few evenings a week to go over some 
uh, of the classic works. Can I insight? Yes. That? Yep, for sure. <laughs> um, that felt invasive. Hmm. I mean, bitch sketchy, but it's hard to say. Uh, as uh, it ain't no fucking book club. Uh, Robin's going to lean lean forward. Classic works, meaning. Oh, the his the histories, the plays. Um, we rotate through who chooses what. And, you know, you read the books, you discuss them. We do a chapter by chapter, uh, on the on the beefier ones. And your involvement with the orphanage? Ah, uh, yes, the orphanage. Well, where are we going to put all these little children? Hmm? These are hard times, and they they won't survive on the streets by themselves. Children on the streets? Well, that's how we ended up with Isaac Strasley, isn't it? Well, you say not survive on their own, but uh, we've heard that there are several children who have gone missing from the orphanage and at least one child who has died there yes a tragedy the rumors are that the three ch the four children were roughhousing and one fell out the window it was a lovely display window at the second story but uh child might have survived the fall but they were shredded by the glass we think that perhaps the three children responsible, or at least thinking they were responsible, somehow escaped. Ernst asked around, but we're pretty sure they're no longer in the town. Which is quite a feat, considering it's locked down. If they were smart, they would have fled to the Vistana camp. That's true. Vistani take in children all the time. A lot of people think Vistani is a bloodline or a race. They are fools to not realize it is a culture. Are you saying anyone can become a Vistani? Mm, I suppose I am. If they are marry in or adopted by uh, a clan, then taught the ways. But they prefer uh, children, uh, for the most part. Children also bring fresh blood into uh, tight-knit clans. Here you, Issa Wayne. Lost uh, a coachman? Hmm. Word has gotten out about that, has it? Hmm. Well, yes, I did. And, um, from what I understand, um, his, uh, his lady love went missing as well. I am beside myself with worry for him. But since I have nowhere to go, I have not much need of a coachman right now. Who is your coachman's paramour? All the people have gone missing, we, maybe we can run something down for you. Let's see, she was a blonde woman, uh, relatively new in town. Huh. I'm trying to remember her name. It's escaping me. 
I don't really make it my business to know about the dalliances of my help. Just that he was happier than I'd ever seen him before. Whenever he... Whenever he looked at her or thought about her, you could tell that, for him, he had found his special someone. Just, you're so well informed, I thought you might know. And given the... Uh... Oh... I think her name was Annika. No surname, uh, just like Halik. Commoners. Was she, uh... Did she serve any particular family or household in the town, or was she no. staying somewhere? If I had to guess, I would say that she was a former druid. She had a very earthy vibe to her. She, um, again, sort of cropped up out of nowhere. Maybe she's from the fisher folk along the lake, but there was something a bit feral about her. They would know more at the Blue Water Inn. I mean, that's where they would meet up for the dalliances. He would never bring a woman here. Uh, Lord knows I have to get on my boys all the time about the women they try to bring over. I need them to settle down, not fill the town with bastards. You have the two sons and the one daughter. When you say the one daughter, she looks so sad and like winces like she took a little bit of psychic damage and she says yes i i have my two sons and my daughter stella and her <laughs> eye her eyes start to uh tear up those best those pastors could you tell us a little bit about what happened with is she faking your it? daughter is she faking it uh yeah as an insight <laughs> sure sure give me an insight Uh, let's see. I see Robin's insight. Do you get insight for Jason? All right. Um, you both feel that she's being sincere. Uh, this woman does seem to care about her children quite a bit. And, uh, the girl much more than the boys. And, uh, whatever happened to this girl, she is very upset. Like, her composure is definitely breaking. Think thinking about what happened to her kid. She says, um, we, we don't really talk about it, um, unless one of you is a healer of the magical sort, I, I don't know what else can be done. Well, if we find something that could help her on our travels, we'll if keep you, her in mind. If you could find a way to cure the madness that has consumed her. I would make it very much worth your while. And you hear cash register sound effect in the background. <laughs> your two sons. I Irene says, well, you, there's the Abbey and of St. Markovia in um, Krasik. We could take her with us if because we're going to go there anyways, so when we go, we can just take a route and bring her back to you like good as new. And Lady Fiona Washer looks at Irina and says, You are aware that uh, Kresik is locked down tight, just like Valakai, but even more so. Do you plan to fight your way through Kretzik to get to the Abbey, or...? And Irene says, well, we got in here, didn't we? I mean, we have a way around the people. And she smiles really big and looks at all of you. 
right? Guys. Some sometimes a friendly word and lending an ear goes a long way. Well, perhaps after we get the matter of Valakai, the vineyard, the trade routes taken care of, I can hire you on as my emissaries to go and speak with uh, Kresik. And we can reopen trade with them as well. Step by step, we will make things right. I am no stranger to outsiders. I know the magic that follows you. You are movers and shakers. You bring change. I want you in my service. And I will pay handsomely to have you. Have you met others before? I have. You might not realize it looking at me, but I am no spring chicken. I am old enough to remember some of the more exciting changes that were brought about by outsiders. If you seek von Zarovich's favor, well, I could be a great ally in assisting with that. Wayne will kind of look around to the rest of the group and say, that is a kind offer, but allow us to earn such favor first. Of course. I don't want to overplay my hands. I just hope that you understand how eager I am for us to work together. Lady, you've given us much to think about, I believe, and discuss. If we had questions for your man, would we be able to uh, speak with him in private as well at some point? Are you referring to Ernst Larnack? Uh, correct. Certainly, I can send him around the, the Blue Water Inn. Correct. Well, like, it's not like you could be staying anywhere else. A real shame about all that. The Blackwater Tavern was... Well, it was quaint, but rustic. Hmm. A shame. Anyways, um, is this your way of telling me that you need to leave? We couldn't possibly take up any more of your time. Of course, of course. But if you do need to take up some of my time, uh, send your men over as you did before. It was very polite of you. They're both so handsome with the little kitten. Oh, it was adorable. I watched them from the window. All right, so you guys get up and head out. I think I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we should ask her, but I think so. We've covered our bases. Yeah. Like I'm sure there's some glaring thing that's going to bite us in the ass, but I, I don't know what it is. I mean, she said you could just come visit again. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
I mean, except right. we know that the Baron is watching us, and every time we visit, it gets more fraught. <laughs> so as you guys head outside, uh, Eastmark says, "All right, what was your take? I feel like creepy. Like we are going from like crazy to creepy." Seemed. Hmm. I almost want to say dangerous. It would be a mistake to put an ally of the devil in charge of Velikai. So what you're saying is you're better off with the crazy man who's putting everyone in the stocks. You know who I And slowly think is... burning the city down you know emotionally. Who I... You know who I think would do the best job? The crazy man's wife. What are you basing that off of? She's a good lady. Eastmark Jeez. says, but this land doesn't care about good people. I could not see her pursuing her husband's current aim. She would probably get you the same benefits as this if if we were worshiper. if we were to remove the baron the burgomaster from power would his wife even have political cachet to be able to, to maintain control at that point or would he's like Walker... she she could make a bid for it um obviously what is being suggested here would cause a bit of a civil war. There would be fighting between different supporting factions throughout the city. And then, then the unknown factions would take that as an opportunity to make their own bid for power. Yes. Well, what is the washerwoman the most afraid of? Isaac. Is Isaac a bad guy? He seemed well-intentioned. We don't know what Isaac is. I think he... I think he wants what's best for this city. The trouble is, if, Isaac has been adopted into their household. Yeah, yes, and but, is if, beholden. but would he abandon his stepmother? Robin's going to look at her and just say, you know how Anne has only one goal in mind, and that is revenge? <sighs> Anne is not a bad person, but Things have happened to her in this land, and she is not herself anymore. And I fear that the same could be said of Isaac. His affliction is different than what afflicts Anne. And he may not be a bad person, but... Isaac seems like he has a way more under control than Anne. But I like Anne. She'll be alright. And the washerwoman will probably take measures against Victor if she ever finds out it was he that uh, is the cause of her, his, her daughter. He's Mark, I, I have a question for you based on your knowledge of this place. Mm. These festivals and this attempt to make everything happy and good here in this town. Mm. What will happen when Strahd decides he's heard enough of this? The same thing that has happened to so many other towns. They will be wiped from the, the map. He will... He will bring storms to wash them away. He controls everything, the weather itself. And as, as he says that, Irina says, um, he is ancient, he is the land. And Ismark says, he is ancient, he is the land. And people walking by, they kind of hear them say that, murmur it to themselves, 
and it just spreads through the crowd through the town. As bits on the ground. Robin's going to look at it as he's going to say, I, I don't disagree. But what I'm asking is really Lady Washer might be evil. She might be dangerous and, and all of those things. But if she's in charge of this place, it seems like it's not going to get wiped off the face of the I land. Don't, I don't want that. But it could become dangerous for us. You know what was in those cards. Guards? What guards? Hmm. Nothing that's, you need to know about. That's Can a complication. I inside Jason? I mean, it literally just said nothing you okay. need to know about. I don't okay. know what the okay. fuck you would insight off of that, but you could if you okay. want. Yeah. I, it's more like... Like, we don't know you well enough. Kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. You're, I, yeah, you're I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't you're think, not in the inner circle. I wouldn't think that you needed <laughs> insight to know that these people have been through hell. You've been in their lives for like less yeah, than 48 yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. It, I was, I was yeah. more trying to discern about them, but I think I could like context clues so. mm. Perhaps when you trust me. So as you guys are kind of standing there, um, you, uh, you, let's see, you hear a familiar voice and uh, see someone across the street. Uh, and you realize that it is uh, Vasily von Holtz, and he says, uh, "And who do we have here? What is?" You actually came! Ismark, Arinia, ah, is your father here as well? Uh, and they move to go speak with him. Do you guys eavesdrop, or...? This is always eavesdropping. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we eavesdrop. Or he's okay. just does. Yeah, um... Irina starts rapidly, like, adjusting her hair and her clothes, but she's also still got this head injury, so, like, she, like, trips on her way over there. Uh, Ismark kind of catches her, um, and then she begins to babble forth um, your journey uh, on the roads, the death of Chris, uh, the deadly mist, um, purple... Uh, exile, uh, just going like a mile a minute, as people sometimes do when they are around their crushes. Uh, Eastmark indulgently lets her finish, and Vasily looks, uh, his brow furrows more than normal as he tries to digest all of this rapid fire information that's coming at him. Uh, and Eastmark says, Yes, well, we came here to try to get the trade routes open, but I had no idea things were as bad as they are. Um, why is your master not doing anything about this? Uh, and Von Holtz says, um, I mean, it is not my place to question my master's uh, motivations or his goals. My life is his, and I am reminded of that constantly. I do what I can, where I can. As far as the fate of Valakai is concerned, that's up to the people to figure out what to do next. Uh, you guys do notice he's wearing some sweet-ass uh, blue jeans, buttonfly, and cowboy boots. But from the waist up, it's 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 Victorian, you know, gentleman. And then Eastmark says, but both of the noble families seem to be 
<clears throat> and then uh, Vasily nods and says, mm, yes, well, things will have to sort themselves out one way or the other. And uh, Eastmark says, um, uh, I suppose. Um, you, uh. And then uh, Von Holt says, Are you... I assume you're staying at the Blue Water Inn. I, I doubt that the Burgomaster has invited you to stay at his house. Uh, and Eastmark says, uh, duh, It is a nice place, and the family is very kind. Uh, and then he says, uh, Well... I hope they're charging you a fair rate, and then they start just having like really boring conversation. Do you, do you guys interject? Continue listening. I mean, I could listen to you role play with yourself. Yeah, I, I'm about to say I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> so like, please jump in at any point. I'm trying to give you the sense that they are just having a normal conversation. <laughs> Jason, would walk over and okay. I oh, know it's it's uh I guess we could say it's good to see you again. I Irenia told me what happened to your your friend Christopher. That's a shame. And Daniel as well. Yeah, Robin's gonna nod <laughs> and she's going to say, um Indeed, it's been a difficult time, but, well, we continue on. Yes, but you've added someone new to your band. Who is this beauty that I look upon? Uh, and he indicates uh, Ez. That is, uh, that's Ez. Ez, is that short for something? Of course. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. What's your name, sir? Um, I am Vasily von Holtz. Um, a minor noble, uh, citizen of Valakai. I do a bit of this and a bit of that in the service of Castle Ravenloft. Mostly tax-related. Let's see. I guess you could just say that I'm a, an accountant who works for very dangerous clients. Very dangerous indeed. I hope that doesn't make you um, poorly disposed to me. Your occupation is of nothing to me, of course. If he's got a decent insight, uh, he knows very well that S is lying to him. Oh, right, yeah. He says, um, well, I've taken up too much of your time, I suppose. Um... Vasily, if I may ask uh, a, a quick favor. Uh, with, with your connections here in the town, could you... Well, what are your thoughts on the Baron and his festivals and uh, the feud between him and, and the, the Watcher Woman? It really wouldn't be prudent of me to uh, comment one way or the other. I but I can I'm comment sure. vaguely. One seeks to reestablish the status quo that has worked for centuries. The other is in a burning wagon careening high speed down a mountain towards a ravine filled with jagged rocks. That's a similar conclusion that I was coming to as well. I appreciate your circumspect uh, insight. Mm. Well, I need to be heading off. Uh, it was a pleasure to see you. I hope that you're able to sort things out. Um, 
and um, everything's all right fiscally, yes? There's nothing that you need um, assistance with. Or I'm sure um, you've, you've taken to the role of adventurers uh, well enough. We've run down some leads, but uh, any financial guidance would be appreciated. Uh, the least we could do to pay back your kindness. Well, I have a... Uh, I do actually have a lead. I, a client of mine. Um, they, uh, they had hired some mercenaries uh, to go and retrieve uh, a bit of treasure. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, they absconded with the goods. They, uh, I believe, uh, were last seen uh, heading towards uh, Argen Vastholt. If they could be not so much brought to justice, but the, the goods themselves acquired and returned, uh, my, my client would be willing to pay quite a large finder's fee. Uh, but then he also kind of says, but I have it on good authority that the absconded goods were certainly worth absconding. Apparently it was a suit of magical armor and several magical weapons. Something we can certainly keep in mind. Uh, he nods and uh, heads out. Well, I guess the question then is... What are our next steps? Uh, do we... Do we get involved? Do we get involved it, here? Do we let leave? it play out? If left to be, they'll slaughter each other. We have what a week and a half until the next uh, festival. I'm not sure we were handed a timeline for affecting any change locally. Oh, I mean, I think we've discussed that there is no major campaign um, timer, but every time you arrive somewhere, um, you set into motion events. And then when you talk to certain NPCs, you set into motion events, and then they get put on the calendar and then they are on a timer. So the more you do and interact with, the more timers you are generating. Yes. If I was a watcher already, she probably tries to do something before the next festival. Mm -hmm. So, so, what, nine days out? It seems she won't try to do anything as long as Isaac is alive. Yeah, but if we don't come up with some kind of plan, she might take matters in her own hands, and that's going to get messy fast. Um, guys, can you give me a second here? Um, Arina, can I speak with you privately? Um, yes, sure. Hey, uh, when? How do you think it went? Do you think he was like, oh, look it, there's the Rose of the Valley. She's looking just as good as always. Do you think, he's, do you think he saw me trip, or...? You've... We've all had a hard journey to get here. I, I think, uh... I think he was pretty understanding. Okay. So what's going on, Wayne? Do we need to go to secret chat? 
No, I just, I wanted to give you some privacy and I wanted to apologize for freaking you out. Where I come from, the people I deal with, there's a lot of perverse dynamics. And when we first got here, I made some assumptions about Isaac's fascination with you. Oh, the and sex dolls? Yeah. Mm. And rightfully so, you were very weirded out, and I probably put you in a terrible headspace. It's been pretty rough, and, yeah. And I wanted to apologize for making assumptions and putting you through that emotionally. But it would seem that there is a connection between you and Isaac. And I didn't want to bring it up with the others without first talking with you. But if we were to use that, we might be able to convince Isaac to step aside without causing undue violence, or at least mitigating the violence. In making some changes here in um, Valakai. I mean, I didn't know how you felt about that. I don't know. Like, Victor throw, threw it around like it was no big deal that Isaac might be my brother, but I don't even know how to bring that up. I don't even know what to talk to him about. And I don't know if I want to talk to a guy who's made like 30 dolls of me and draws pictures of me without knowing how I would look as a grown-up, but the pictures looked pretty accurate, you know? Yeah. Well... I could go with you or someone else you trust to talk to him if that was something you, you felt mean, you could do or wanted like, to do. Like, uh, what, invite him for tea or something? Like... Yeah. Or just to, just to talk. Just to say you know i i feel there is some sort of history that maybe we have and want to get to know you better and okay okay but what if it ends up that he's really nice even though he's scary and kind of weird and then you know now people want to kill him well that's the thing and that's why i wanted to talk to you is we can remove him from the equation, as it were. How? If we, can, if we could explain to him, if we can make him see reason, and that what the Baron's doing is hurting people, and if you establish enough rapport, can build up a connection with him, you could make that case and maybe get him to see our point of view, and he might realize hey, this is, you know, better for everybody. Okay. Again, you would be pivotal in this, but I don't want to bring it up to the others without you feeling comfortable with it. And if you say, no, Wayne, I don't like your idea, then you and I talked about how I made you feel uncomfortable the other day, and that's that was it. Okay. No, I want to go talk to him. I do. I want to, before all okay. this, whatever is about to happen, happens, I want to at least have heard what he has to say. Do you want me to go with you? I, yes, but maybe, yes, okay. If you don't want me to, that's okay too. N nah, I... Hmm, let me think about or, it. Yeah, and again, if you feel someone's better suited to help you out, that's okay. Okay. Thanks, Lynn. Anytime. And Wayne will, uh, presume Rena will join the rest of the group. Okay. And, and he will say, I have an idea. And he will suggest that maybe Arena uses his fascination with her to build rapport and get to know him better and maybe we can convince him to step aside and reduce you know the the level of violence that might go down with all this mm. 
So what do you guys think? I mean, that's kind of been my thinking this whole time, is I would hate to kill someone who might be important to Irenia. That's why I brought it up in case we wanted to discuss that. I would hate to kill someone that could be important to the city. Agreed. If Isaac is in place and is not a sociopath and is just misguided, he could perhaps be a key to helping keep the Baron Ness in line and perhaps not be as evil, perhaps allowing maybe instead uh, um, I don't know. It, it could change the equation greatly. That's what I'm trying to say. It would be very hard to get him to betray his father. He does seem very loyal. It if be... anything, the best bet would be to get him to stand up to his father and reveal his madness to him. If Irenia wants to speak with him, then Well, we're here. We're, way. we're here for another night, yeah. So I'll just, um, I'll just make arrangements to go over there for dinner tonight, and I'll just maybe he wants to have dinner or something. And I will see where things are at, and then we can talk about it when I get back. Uh, you, probably best if someone you, goes with you, or, you or perhaps, alone. perhaps not having dinner there maybe in a more public locate maybe a private room at the inn or or something like that somewhere a little more neutral ground uh there's this thing called craigslist back in our world mm -hmm. where people used to meet up to trade items with other people that they didn't know mm -hmm. and there's like stories of you know people getting killed or robbed mm -hmm. or whatever and i i just uh, Public meeting place is what I would say. Okay. Uh, okay. But what if he doesn't want to talk about, like, you know, personal family stuff in front of a bunch of people, though? Right, like maybe a private room in a public place. Maybe, you know, like I said, in, in the inn, maybe they've got a little private room where you could have dinner or something. And maybe. you wouldn't want to necessarily start with that. You would try... Oh, I mean, how many times do I have to have, like, tea with this guy like i just want to find out what he knows about my past i don't want to like make this a recurring thing okay well then start with that and then from your you know i mean the guy's the guy's pretty creepy okay like you know just because we might be related by blood doesn't mean i'm going to just sweep under the rug all this stuff we've we've heard about them and that we see see them you know it's just i don't Got to, okay. got to keep not, a level I'm not ahead. saying I'm not saying ignore it. Just there may be mitigating factors, and if we can stop additional violence from occurring, that's not a bad thing either. All right. If I may ask one other thing. Okay. Perhaps this is an opportunity if we are thinking about getting involved politically. Perhaps there is some sort of private location, maybe not at an inn, maybe there's an abandoned building somewhere or, or mm. some, some neutral ground where you can meet with him privately. But where... That sounds meeting... like the thing that Craigslist would not want you to do. Well, uh, listen, uh, let me finish my thought. But maybe okay. it's a place where we could stage ourselves to be ready and watching to ambush. so that if to ambush him if things go poorly with your discussion mm. it could be at your signal ambush the captain of the guards inside the lockdown city it's just a thought Robin the only place we possibly might know is the uh 
may or may not be haunted uh, in. I think we are rushing. I think let's let yeah. Irina talk to him once. Let's see what she thinks. And then we can plot your murder. Let's not plot any murders, yeah. please. Yeah, well, Robin, uh, we already when... have so much stuff to do, Is Like, we can just be doing that on top of everything else. Have you been paying attention to how many things people want this us to do? I'm, this is what I'm saying. Robin's going to hold up her hand. She's going to say, to be clear, I hope that we don't want to, to murder him or that we don't, don't want, need to. I don't want to murder him. I'm just trying I... to make sure we cover our options as we think this through. Uh, Crash, what time of day is it right now? It is about two in the afternoon. Okay. So Wayne's going to suggest to the party, um, what, why don't you send an invitation for dinner to music? Have him come and join us at the tavern. That's where we're staying. It's a public space. He'll feel safe. It, it's not like we're going to meet some place where he might get jumped. He might feel that's kind of suspicious. That might be um, a place where you can be alone with people around you. You know, like if it's a big, if it, there's a lot of people, it's crowded, things are going on. He might feel comfortable having a conversation with you. It would allow the rest of us to you know, be on hand in case something goes sideways. Um, and while we're waiting for you know, the evening meal time to arrive, we can swing by the uh, orphanage. Why do we want to go there? The missing kids, the dead kid. If we don't want to do that, that's fine. It was just a suggestion. Hmm. If anything, I'd say we would have her meeting. I don't discuss catch up tomorrow we head out to the vineyard we get the payment we come back three days four days later pay off Anne's leg and then we are set for whatever happens in this city and and will not do well much longer on the leg she has If we are to retrieve my cart, I think she should be as strong as possible. I, I do not think it's a good idea to rush to the vineyard. Eastmark East okay. lo looks at you and says, um, I don't have any dog in this fight because I have my own things to be concerned with but you speak of this cart like it's the most incredible treasure that has ever existed like it's going to solve everyone's problems as soon as they have it i hope that you're not leading my friends here astray on some selfish errand it will give us what we need what you all need to do what you want to do. That's so vague. What is in the card? What I need is the trade routes open. Is that in the card? What is in the card will help you get your trade routes open. So it's a cure for the Baron's badness. Okay, now we know what's in the card. It's ridiculous. Uh, Eastmark walks away. Uh, and as he does, uh, we are at time. So, um, congratulations on adding like 17 new quests to your quest line. Um, you, you guys have a lot to discuss on Discord and figure out because uh, time is ticking. Uh, yeah, we need to pick need to pick something to move with it. Yeah, we just need to pick pick and go. Yeah, your your calendar is filling up with the uh, with events that uh at this point 
it would be pretty miraculous if you could do all of them. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you also told this young man that you were going to pick him up uh, at his house in, like, two days? Did you say two days? I think we had said we, it would be a couple of days, but we would uh, get word to him if it, if it might be a little longer. For right, sure. right. Okay. All right. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot on the uh, in the air right now. So um, whatever, it's a sandbox. So whatever you guys decide to do, but I, I, I I'm not gonna run a split party sandbox. Also, you would probably not survive, honestly. Um, that if you tried to do a, a split party uh, sandbox. So whatever it is, you guys have to decide that that's what you're gonna do and and do it. So yeah. Oh, all right. Um, quick announcements, I guess. Um, there's, uh, me and Orf are going to hang out and do a little vodcast tomorrow. Dom is indisposed. We're going to talk about, do GMs have a, an obligation to preserve the lore of, uh, the games they are running? So we're going to, we're going to talk about that. That's kind of a heavy, heavy topic. Um, so we're going to see, see how that pans out. Saturday morning, we got Red Hand of Doom. Sunday night, or sorry, Sunday morning, we've got Curse of Strahd Daybreak. Uh, uh, Sunday night, we got Mythic. Monday night, we've got Odyssey. Tuesday night, um, Abomination Vaults. Wednesday, we're going to play some more Cult of the Lamb. Might be the last session of Cult of the Lamb uh, next Wednesday. Uh, otherwise, there's probably only two sessions left. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed the game. Um, and then... I don't know what I'm going to play next, but I definitely think I'll keep playing games on Wednesdays because it's been it's been really fun. Uh, and then Thursday we'll be back here, and hopefully you guys will have a decision about where you're going to go and what you're going to do. So, all right. Anyone else have any other announcements before we adjourn? All right. Not uh, too much an announcement, but uh -huh. like, consider we had Christmas Critters and Orf's Rhyme Game. I don't know how he feels about lore preservation. Yeah, that's part of why we're going like, to like the South Park it. Christmas Critters. So, so it's going to be one of those like debate things where, you know, I I generally see like pretty pretty broadly on a topic, but I'll probably go full on. It's the DM's responsibility to uh, support lore, and then he'll get angry maybe that's my goal and he'll try to argue why you shouldn't have to care about the lore and then it'll be an interesting uh interesting discourse it'll make orf angry <laughs> you are very skilled but i don't know if you can manage that yeah it'd be it'd be cool but yeah i don't know i think i think some people come pretty I'll, close i think some people come pretty close so we'll I, see. I, I won't be so satisfied unless he cusses you out like fuck you crash oh it's man it's not about that shit wow i don't know i mean yeah. i can't some, see that some, happening i'm pretty tired some, some, I'm Pretty, I, I, I'm pretty tired by Friday night. I don't know if I really want to do that to, to him. He, he's got a lot on his plate right now. Um, anyways. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Figure out what you guys are going to do. Otherwise, you're going to spend next session watching the time go by and adding 17 more quests to your quest log. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The other groups have the same issue. Classic group, they saw what was going on and they were like, eeny, meeny, miny, that one. They took a quest and they just ran away. <laughs> They like snatched like Witcher style. They rode up to the quest board, they ripped all the papers off, and they rode back out of town. Like that's how they that's how they managed to do it. They are no longer in Valkai. The other group, same situation. They're like, tomorrow we leave for the quest. And then the one guy's like, wait! Before we go to bed, I want to follow up on this one thing. <laughs> and now they're still in, they're still in Valakai. So yeah. Alright. Um, good night. And oh, also worth mentioning, please don't watch this particular one. Um, there's tons of spoilers. If you do, if you're like, what happened last week? I want to watch. Um, it was full DM view, so everything is spoiled. The spoilers all over this. Uh, so it would be very bad. In my DM view, I have like so much notes and stuff on my screen and on character sheets to remind me of stuff. So it would be it would be terrible to to watch it. So just a heads up. All right, so we can listen to it. That's yeah, okay. you could listen to it if you want to. Yeah, sure. But yeah, the the visuals would definitely be huge spoilers. So, all right, um, I'm gonna gonna cut the recording, and that'll be it.